makes its way skyward once again. Good defensive work by Cameron Longbottom. Have a look at that. He buzzes away. He could have even went between their legs. There it is. Hear the siren. Hello and welcome to the Nuri Ukta Nukt Ukt Ut Pa. I should get it right right from the word go oval and uh, Anzac Day clash. Really looking forward to the clash today between the Tigers and the Panthers, the Anguston team. Both B grade teams uh, still out on the ground, but uh, the B grade has just been completed. Six goals, seven forty-three. Nuri have just defeated Anguston one goal, seven thirteen, a thirty-point margin in favour of the Tigers at the end of the game of the B grade. Good quality. B grade game and uh, very shortly we'll be uh, we'll be covering the Anzac Day ceremony which uh, we're really looking forward to the Newry team and the Angus team A grade team both making their way out on the ground to show the respects for the Anzacs and uh, a big day in Australian history a big day for all of us to show our respects and to show uh, show everyone the respects that it deserves with uh, Australia being a very lucky country and it's because of all our service men and women as the netballers look like they're making their way out on the ground as well. Live streaming and commentary brought to you here SA Regional Footy on the Facebook pages hopefully uh, for those people that are uh, having a look at it if you'd like to share it and let everyone else know about it as the umpires make their way out on the ground as well for the A grade clash and uh, the lines of honour, or the lines of uh, respect, are being lined up with both clubs. Been joined by Paul Oborn on the uh, camera. Thank you to Paul. And also joined uh, in the commentary spot by uh, a young fellow I know quite well, Tom Haslett. G'day, Tom. G'day, Chuck. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Thank you for uh, for coming in. A bit of a work experience situation here for the young fellow, so uh, hopefully you enjoy the coverage. And uh, the netballers are making their way out from both Anguston and the Tigers as well. So Newry and Anguston both lining themselves up to show the respects for this great country and this, uh, this great Anzac tradition. Anzac Day 2022. And the A-grade clash will be starting straight after. Umpires, goal umpires, boundary umpires, all lined up uh, ready to show their respects as well, which is absolutely fantastic. So... Uh, once the ceremony starts, I'll be quiet so you can listen to what's happening as far as uh, the ceremony goes. But Nuri are doing a great job in showing their respects. As the secretary, Josh, looks like he's running out onto the ground to start the ceremony for Anzac Day. And uh, Paul will, uh, Paul's got a very good shot of the netballers in front, arm in arm, uh, both Nuri and Anguston, and both teams. For those people that don't know the league, uh, the Tigers, obviously, black and yellow is Newry, and uh, blue and white is Anderson. Here's the ceremony. Enjoy.
that was pretty much rough knowledge for the bottom part from the other side. Thank you, Dad. Today we traditionally take a moment to remember those who have made the ultimate sacrifice. But that sacrifice demands that we reflect, ponder, and learn from every conflict. Because that's what free society is what destroy each other. We learn from the past so we can make a better navigating future for all generations. When we take that moment of silence here in a moment, Remember not just those that have made the ultimate sacrifice, but those who have sacrificed by continuing to serve, have served, and had to return home to try to have a new life. They need our support to help return to that radio life and enjoy the privileges that they have fought to defend. Let's leave again. They shall go not home, because we are left for a They shall not worry them. Though the years condemn, at the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them.
arrive at the uh, Newry Oval. Fantastic ceremony and a uh, great deal of respect shown by both teams. Both uh, A grade and B grade netballers uh, lined up at the front, and uh, also the uh, and also the uh, A grade and B grade football clubs of both teams. Fantastic ceremony as the captains make their way into the centre of the ground. As the girls make their way off to go and play the netball they need to play. And as the B graders go off and pop in the showers after their B grade clash. Very uh, a huge amount of respect shown by the crowd as well. Hats were off. Good crowd. Good numbers here at the Newry Oval. And uh, well done to the league. Well done to both clubs involved. But, uh, that's one of the better better Anzac Day football ceremonies I've seen, Tom. That was, that was very good. Yeah, absolutely. Um, hopefully it's just as good a game. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, umpires are out there doing their warm-up and the, the umpires are uh, dressed up in their green just to uh, camouflage themselves from the, uh, the grass so no one notices that they're out there. Tigers doing their warm-up down the northern end. Angston doing their warm-up down the southern end. And looking forward to a great clash here at the Brosser and White and Gawler Footy League. Plenty of great uh, scores have already come through from uh, games during the weekend and uh, we won't uh, go through all of them but a few upsets and a few uh, few results already while we're talking um, while we're talking football Tom the uh, the um, Cross and Light and Gawler games from Saturday it's a, it is a split round obviously as far as Anzac Day is concerned a couple of games played on Saturday a couple of games played today so uh, what were the results from the weekend uh, from Saturday's games Tom? Uh, yep, so uh, Kapunda got the job done over Freeling on Saturday, uh, two goal margin. So Freeling 14 goals, 10 uh, 94 to Kapunda 16 10 106. Uh, and Brossa Districts have upset Tanunda. Uh, Brossa Districts 12 goals, 10 82 to Tanunda 7 goals, 7 49. And obviously both games on today being Anzac Day clashes here at Newry. Newry taking on Angerston, of course, Gawler Central's taking on South Gawler with Williston having the bye this weekend. So looking forward to a great clash. And uh, Tom, you, you play a bit of footy for, for Kapunda. Have you, come up across, have you come up across either of these two teams that, that are playing here today? Yep. No, I... Sorry, what was that? <laughs> have, you, have, you, have, you played, have you played against uh, Angerston or Newry? Uh, no, well, the Bombers have played Newry um, last week, the week before Easter, but I was unfortunately out out with um, COVID protocols. Um, but yeah, Newry, uh, they look like a strong strong side actually, so it should be a good game. Um, Angerston have been a strong club for a few years now, so looking forward to a good battle against two, two strong teams. As mentioned, uh, Tom Haslett doing his uh, rookie's job, his virgin flight as uh, special comments. And the one thing I've got to remember is to make sure that I'm looking at him when I speak to him because his uh, headset hasn't got the, the volume the same I had. But uh, that's why I didn't understand the question because he didn't bloody hear it. But uh, anyway, clash will get started very shortly as the boundary umpires are practicing their throw-ins. The, uh, the field umpires are doing their warm-up. And uh, we've got a bit of rocky music in the background, uh, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure what that's going to mean for the game, but uh, looking forward to a good clash. Both of these teams, uh, well, basically fourth and fourth and fifth, will sit. They're sort of hovering around the same area on the Premiership table, Tom. Yeah, yeah, and I think it's going to be important this year, looking at looking at results already in the first three rounds. Um, games like this are, are pretty important to win. Um, I think the league's going to be pretty tight, and it's a tight. Um, tight battle for spots up the top so um, yeah it should be should be a good game and looking forward to it one thing we should mention also is uh, for those people that don't know uh, Barossa Light and Gawler as we say hello to Josh the secretary of uh, Newry just goes past and gives us a thumbs up um, this is round three in uh, Barossa Light and Gawler football so there are some leagues that only just started on Saturday but this is round three Barossa Light and Gawler and uh, while we're at it we'll thank them throughout the day but while we're at it the uh, Barossa Light and Gawler footy league and uh, both clubs, um, this is the first time we've been here to do a coverage of, of one of these uh, Bross Light and Gawler games. Both Newry and Angerston, uh, a big thank you to, uh, to them already, as well as the league, for allowing us to be here. And we're looking forward to a good clash. Special mention to Ben Giles, who's uh, done heaps. Uh, he's the president of the Newry Footy Club. Uh, to Ben Giles and to Josh and uh, to the committee, uh, very much appreciative of uh, setting them up, setting us up beautifully here in the grandstand. We're down the southern end of the grandstand, 
uh, behind the coach's box and uh, Paul Oborn's been here. I don't know what time Paul Oborn got here, but he's the cameraman and he does all the technical stuff. I think he's been here since about half past seven this morning. He's got everything set up beautifully, but uh, looking forward to a good clash. Tigers versus Panthers, so Battle of the Cats. Nuriutpa and uh, Angerston. Angerston currently down the southern end in their huddle, having a bit of a chat about tactics and having a chat about what's going on, whereas uh, Nuri are just making their way out to the out to their positions. Tigers versus Panthers, looking forward to it. Uh, one thing as far as a commentator is concerned when you're coming to a league that you're not used to is uh, you always want Guernseys that uh, the numbers stand out. And uh, both Angerston and Tigers have got uh, very good Guernseys that stand out beautifully. So hopefully there won't be too many mistakes with me calling names that I'm not aware of. A bit of argy-bargy already happening in, this, in the centre before the uh, first bounce. All in jest. Also uh, very important, I'm not, I haven't had a real good look at Angerston's Guernseys, but I uh, have noticed the Newry Guernseys with the Anzac uh, emblems and uh, the Anzac Guernsey of Newry looks very stylish, very good, and I imagine Angerston's got the same, but uh, I have noticed the Newry one, very impressive. As the umpire's in the centre of the ground ready to roll, players are almost in their positions. We'll try and give you a few score updates throughout the day as well, as the umpire holds the ball aloft. Ruckman, Fennell for the Tigers get the ball down, no real clear advantage, nice piece of work by Angerston to be first in there, nice uh, tackle there by Argent, ball's been forced out, still on the uh, the half forward line for the Tigers, big group of players, Argent being one of them, hands the ball back to the umpire and the ball goes skyward, nice piece of work by Fennell there to tap the ball down, Angerston with a series of couple of handballs including one from uh, Canelli gets it out and goes down towards the half forward line. Good lead. Swings around on the left. Goes down towards the 50 metre arc for Angerston. Grouping of players. Good defensive work by the Tigers. Good defensive mark taken by the player there in Jenna. Who plays on straight away and chips it out. Finding Norton. Norton on the 50 metre defensive arc for the Tigers. Over on the far side which is not very good for a commentator because there's a old set of eyes, it's hard to see that far over but it's over near the scoreboard now, good piece of work by Angerston, ends up at the hands of Argent with a series of handballs, once again forward forward goes Angerston, inside the 50 metre arc and once again great positioning and great mark again defensively by Jenna who's been flattened after he's taken the mark, Umpa, umpire comes in no further penalty but uh, Jenna already, Tom Haslett uh, already taken a couple of good defensive marks being in the right place at the right time Tom yeah yep that's it a couple of quick quick inside 50s for Angerston it's just uh, hasn't resulted in anything yet I'm gonna say that the wind is favoring Angerston's end but uh, we'll, we'll discuss that further very shortly Westlake gets the ball on the half back line still on the half back line for the Tigers good numbers of uh, Tigers there should make its way out the uh, the kick almost falconed one of the Tigers players but it is going to come out now with a clearing ball from Hoopner. Hoopner kicks the ball out towards the wing over this side which is uh, over near the coach's box nice work bit of a shimmy and a shake by the player there in Henke. Henke opportunity to go into the forward lines for Newry but once again good defensive work by Angerston good positioning by the player there in Ryan that's Tom Ryan good defensive mark bit of pressure shown there by Doki but uh, very good work there by Ryan to take the defensive mark. Plays on with the left. I'm not sure about this breeze because that looked like it was holding up in the breeze. So we'll get a read on the breeze very shortly. That certainly didn't look like it was favouring Angerston's end when that ball went up in the uh, in the air because it uh, looked like it held up a bit, Tom. Yeah, it did. The breeze looks strong, actually. So um, got to capitalise when we get inside 50, I reckon. Absolutely. The ball's uh, there for the Tigers. Bit of a tapping to himself of Bentley. That's the Scott variety, still on the half forward line for the Tigers. Nice work, gang tackle by the Tigers to hold the ball up. And the umpire will come in and say, I'll have that, thanks very much. Ratcliffe on the bottom of the pack, hands the ball to the umpire. And the umpire comes in to throw the ball skyward. Once again, good clash, nice tap down by Adams, but didn't really go to anyone to advantage because there's so many players gathered around the play there in Hood. Jake Hood gets the ball, he's tackled again, gang tackled again. One of those tacklers being Rosenwick. Ball goes to the umpire again. Umpire's been busy already. Nice pick up at shoelace level by Shannon, who's the coach of uh, Angerston, but it ends up in the hands of the Tigers. Goes down towards full forward for the Tigers. Oh, high bump. Wobbernet, oh, it was an accidental one, but it was it was spotted by the umpiring. Good umpire. Good umpiring decision there. 
It was accidental, but it was high. Players are just uh, exchanging phone numbers and finding out what sort of topping they want on their pizzas after the game. No ill feeling by the bump. It was just a, uh, a collision that needed to happen with the ball in the area. But it has been penalised and Tigers will take the free kick. Doki. Got an opportunity. He'll be kicking. Not much of an angle to talk about. He'll be kicking probably from around 45 metres by the time he puts it on the slipper. Mitchell Doki for the Tigers. First scoring opportunity in the game. Very deliberate in his approach. Nice looking kick off the boot, although no, I'll take that back. It looked like a Stephen Kernahan <laughs> helicopter. <laughs> That's a mi minor score. Looked all right when he put it on the boot, but it didn't look any good afterwards. Ball comes in from the full back of Angerston. Kicks it out, looking for good, uh, good contest over there. The ball was spilt by the, the coach there and Shannon in close contact with his opponent from Newry. And the umpire says, hello, the umpire that's not in control has found a free kick and it is going nearly up this way. Plays on from 50 metre out. We'll get an idea of the breeze here. It is favouring the Tigers end by the look of that kick, Tom. Riley, uh, uh, the uh, Riley Argent gets the handball. Doesn't really go to any advantage, but he follows it up and taps it forward again. Good piece of work. Now a handball ends up in the hands of Jackson Murphy's hands, goes down the wing and uh, going to be a resulting either a mark or a free kick to the player there in Westlake. Westlake oh, kicks, that's a pretty ordinary looking kick but it's going to be okay, the player's got a bit of space, that player being uh, Wilfred, Wilfred down towards the half forward line, oh that's great grab man. by Tigers, that's a good grab, he plays on straight away, handballs the ball to Hoopner. Hoopner has a shot on goal, he likes the look of it and so he should, i tell you what that's a nice looking kick. I think it was uh, Jagurki that Gregurki, I hope I pronounced that right. Gregurki took the mark on 50, didn't want to have a shot himself and handballed uh, on. That's a good goal and uh, Tom's doing the, um, I'll just remind Tom, my uh, my apprentice, that he's doing the goal kicking uh, list as well. And that uh, was number nine, Hoopner, Bradley Hoopner for the Tigers getting first goal on the board and a nice looking goal. I will correct myself from earlier. I thought the breeze uh, wasn't much to talk about, but it's certainly favouring Nuri Upta's end. I'm going to go a goal, maybe two goals advantage. Rutman go up. Lovely tap by the player there and Fennell. Once again, goes to ground and plenty of players around it. Ends up with the ball back again, the Rutman in Fennell. Player down for the Tigers who was dealt with after play, but he's getting himself back up again as it makes its way back to the half forward line for the Tigers. Good defensive work by Angerston. Comes out towards the player there in, in Murphy, but uh, uh, the player in Ratcliffe gets the ball first, handballs it on, and now it ends up in the hands of Jackson Murphy. Murphy looks inboard, goes to play on, then changes his mind, swings on his left and goes down the line to pass. Finds the player there in uh, Anthony. That's Ben Bridey. Uses his left, goes deep into the forward 50. Good contest of players. Nice uh, defensive work by the Tigers. Nice handball over the top. The Angerston player there in Durden got the handball, but it didn't go to any advantage. Good clearing punch by Madden for the Tigers. Pumps it out towards 40 metres out from the Angerston goal, but it's going to come back in. Nice little pass. Good defensive work and good defensive pressure again by the uh, Tigers players. They're using a handball probably a bit too much in their defensive zone. They kick the ball out on the 50 metre arc, and Murphy takes a defensive mark in his forward line 50. With the breeze the way it is, it's probably too far out for him to have a shot on goal, you would think. He's directing traffic with his hands and saying, I want you to lead here, I want you to lead there, but it's very crowded down in the forward 50. Boots it in towards the goal square. Good defensive mark again by that player in Jenna. Gee, Jenna's been busy already. Picks the ball out for the Tigers. Good defensive work. Over on the scoreboard side. Little chip kick. Looking for on the bounce, Rosenwick, who uh, tries to get it moving down, but once again, good defensive work by Angston. Carnelli, Ryan Carnelli gets the ball, goes into the forward 50, and uh, we're not doing too many stats on how many marks and everything, but I can tell you that that's Jenna's fourth mark in defence. Very good work. Picks the ball out now. Uh, Hoopner was the player there, kicking the ball out to Laverty. Laverty, little chip ball, just over the top towards the wing, near the commentary box, here in the grandstand. Hoopner, being very busy, first goal. Liked his play already. Only eight minutes into the first quarter. And I've just put the mockers on him because he's just been sport with his kick and it goes out of bounds. Good defensive work there by Hood to spoil that ball. The boundary umpire comes in. Has a look around to see what she's got behind her. And in it goes. Lovely throw in. 
Good piece of work by the contestant Ruttman. Once again, Carnelli for Angerston. Good piece of work. Didn't get the ball very far off the boot, but there's a bit of space here now. Player there and Argent goes. That's a lovely looking pass. Gee, that's a good pass by Argent. Angerston now has the ball. Probably going to be kicking for goal on a bit uh, more acute than 45 degree angle. It's left legger. It's a left legger and it's a Anto Anthony, sorry, Ben. We've seen that he's a left legger, so he's probably on the wrong side for a left legger. Been busy early. Argent, lovely pass. Going to be kicking from around 40 metres. Most left leggers are hook foots. Let's see whether this one's a hook foot. It's a hook foot, but it didn't hook very far. It's only just hit the right hand side goalpost for a minor score. Angerston's first. It's a minor score. One goal, one seven. Newry up to it. Lead Angerston, one solitary point. Nice looking kick. Uh, I'm going to say into a two goal breeze, Tom. You might like to do a bit of research and tell me what you think about the breeze, but I reckon it's probably a two goal breeze, do you think? Yeah, I reckon, yeah, yeah. And I think Newry is setting up beautifully behind the footy, so. Uh, Angerson are going to have to make the most of their shots on goal at the moment because Nuri's defence looks quite hard to get through. Well, Jenna's making a pig of himself down there. No, he's already he's taken four defensive marks in nine minutes of football. He's uh, positioned himself beautifully, Jenna, on four occasions. So Angerson's getting the ball into the 50. And while we say that, we're going to be having a shot on goal. Kicking from around 48 metres. It's a nice looking kick off the boot. Gone to the right hand side and once again, uh, Still not sure about this breeze because that carried through about five metres through the goal. So uh, might be a bit of a fluky breeze, I think. But that was a nice kick. Uh, didn't look like it was held up by much of a breeze at all. As the fullback kicks out for Newry, going over that far side, an early fly. Should have been penalised. Yes, he was. And uh, the player there, I think that might be uh, Jaden Anthony, gets the free uh, gets the uh, free kick. Nice piece of work defensively again by uh, Newry. Nice little chip kick by Matthews. Still on the half back line for Newry. Two scoring shots apiece. Newry is seven. Angerston at two solitary points. Five point margin, currently 10 minute mark, nearly the 11 minute mark of the first turn. Ball marks its way. It's absolutely clean, bold. Uh, Wilfred ends up in the hands of Angerston again, who's going into the forward line again. Two on two against one. Good defensive work again by Newry up to the spoil the ball and it goes out of bounds and we'll have a throw in good defensive uh, set up there by Newry home ground Anzac Day tradition and uh, plenty of plenty of great movements already in 12 minutes of football there's good defensive work there by Mitchell Norton to uh, spoil that ball anyway it's on the half back line still for Newry Nice work uh, on the half, Rolak. Rolak goes down towards the wing. Good mark taken there by the player there in grief. Grieve, number eight for Angerston. Keeping possession for Angerston. Chips, tips the ball over. Fallon, Fallon goes out looking for Canelli. Wasn't a very good kick, but Canelli's good enough to go and get it. Nice work over there. Wilfred, good, good, uh, good uh, defensive work by Wilfred, the Tigers, to keep the ball on that half forward line for Newry. Plenty of players over there and Wilfred ends up to it. Slaps it on the, on the uh, left boot to do a ca chaos ball in towards the forward 50. Newry, I'm not sure how he grabbed it. He was against two opponents. It was a lovely little pass, but it's gone straight to the opposition. And the captain of Angerston, Jack Miles, takes the defensive mark. Plenty of space, so he takes a bounce, plays on, gets himself an extra 30 metres, then boots it out towards the commentary box. Looking for the player there. It's an ugly looking bounce, but he's been good enough to pick it up. That player being Tuckwell. Tuckwell, handball back towards Murphy. Murphy's been busy this quarter. Good afternoon to Pacer, who I know is uh, watching the live stream. Pacer Murphy over on the EP. Ball goes down towards the weak. That, gee, that's a good grab. Liked his game already. He's taken a few uh, good forward marks already, uh, Anthony. That being the uh, Ben variety. Chips the ball in, looking for Jake Hood. Put on the half forward line for Angerston. Looks at his options once again. Newry to have set up. It's three versus one almost down there. Good contested ball. Jenna gets the ball. Spins out. Handballs, but it goes straight to Angerston. Angerston player there in Shannon. Chips the ball out. Good vision by the coach. Coach Jay Shannon for Angerston. He could have blazed away, but he had a quick look to his right hand side and saw a player out there on his own. Little chip kick, finding the play there in Durden. Jed Durden, there was good vision by the coach there, Tommy. 
Yeah, yeah, and Angerston are doing a really good job of working the ball up through the middle of the ground. I think they're probably winning the 50-50 ball and working it into their forward 50 against the breeze beautifully. Durden on a slight angle. Distance isn't a problem and accuracy just slightly to the right hand side of the stick and that's minus score. Scoreboard attendants over on the uh, scoreboard doing a very good job. There's about three of them over there. They're doing a very good job, the youngsters over there. Great regional footy. Having the, the families all here and the netballers here and the footballers all here. And once again, if you missed it earlier, fantastic uh, Anzac Day ceremony held by the New York the Footy Club earlier on before the game. Ball looks like it's going to be, uh, was it touched on the way out? Yes, the umpire said it was. Well, the umpire is actually saying to the boundary umpire, was it touched or was it a, are we going to have a throw in or a kick in? The boundary umpire says, we'll throw it in, thanks. 14 minute mark of the first term here at the lovely Newry Oval. Absolutely spectacular day here today. A couple of handballs, ends up in the hands of the player there and Nick Fallon, who kicks the ball straight into the stomach of uh, Rolak for Newry Tigers. Ball's not going anywhere. Henke's on the bottom, bottom of the pack, gives it to the umpire and says, here you go, throw it skyward. Two Ruckman, Adams, Fernell. No real clear winner, it's hit the ground. There's plenty, plenty of players around it. One of them's Argent. Argent uh, tapped the ball forward and went to Nichols. Nichols uh, is tackled upon very quickly. We'll have another ball up. Nichols being the dad of the team, I've been told. We've got a few nicknames that uh, we probably can and cannot say later on during the game. But uh, yeah, I've been told, Tom, that uh, Nichols is the dad of the team. So I don't know whether that's the team, that means he's the oldest player out there. <laughs> we'll get to that later on. Board 50 for. Angerston, once again, they're containing the ball in there pretty well, but once again, defensively, well, defensively, uh, Neary doing a good job, although that time the tackle went high. Player in, Shannon, plays on straight away, trying to open up the forward line the best way he can, getting it down there as quick as he can, because Neary makes good numbers down there, Tom, but defensively, they're getting the numbers back yeah, up. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they're setting up really well behind the behind the ball, um, which is probably why Angerston kicked three points. The three shots on goal haven't been uh, the easiest looks, so Neary doing a good job back there. We're not counting inside 50s, but uh, Angerston had plenty of times in there. And the ball went up, the ball went down, players jumped on top of it, and the umpire throws it up again. 40 metres out from the Angerston goal. Lovely tap by the player there in Fennell for the Newry Tigers. But once again, it hit the ground. Plenty of players there, so plenty of tackles, plenty of non-opportunities to get a clearance. And we'll have another ball up. Umpires have been busy already. Oh, hello, there's been a throw. <laughs> there's been a throw uh, penalised. I didn't actually see that one, but the free kick will be taken by Norton. Norton for the Tigers. Gee, I'll tell you what, Tom, there's a lot of left leggers out there today. Yeah, Just yeah, it's good to see, isn't it? Chief? Yeah, absolutely. Norton kicks the ball down long. Nice piece of work there by all players. There's about five or six players. Once again, uh, Fallon, Nick Fallon being one of them. Tom Ryan being another. Throws the ball to the umpire for another rough contest between Adams and Fernley. Fennell, rather. Good piece of work by the Tigers to get the clearance by Bentley. Scott Bentley gets it down. There's a bit of space here for the player there in James Bentley. And he runs into an open goal. Fortuitously got it out of that ruck, ruck contest. Bentley to Bentley it was. And uh, Scott, uh, James Bentley found himself uh, with five or ten metres in the, in the bit of clearance. And uh, well played. And another goal to the Tigers. Yeah, Fennell's doing really well in the ruck. I reckon he's getting first hand to a to most of the most of the contest so the Tigers just need to get on top a little bit more in the midfield and um, yeah a couple more sneaky goals out the back like that might happen. Well played by Newry. Takes their score to two goals, 113, leading Angston three points. This is SA Regional Footy. We do a regional game every weekend, including all the finals. So uh, once again this is the first one at Barossa Light and Gawler and we really appreciate the Newry Newry Footpar. I've got to take my time to say it, Tom, because yeah. I always get it mixed up. They've uh, been very, very good to us, and we appreciate the, the league and the clubs involved. Ball still in the centre, plenty of players around it. As Tom mentioned, uh, Fennell's getting a plenty of hand on it in the ruck contest, but it's going to ground, and there's not a lot oh, here we go. being able to... There's a bit of argy-bargy happening. The umpires, the umpires said, well, you know, if you're going to start throwing your, throwing your weight around, you've got to be careful, and the free kick's been found, and it's going to Rosenwick. Rosenwick has a free kick. Didn't actually see the incident, but I think it was a bit of push and shove that the umpire didn't like as the ball goes down. Good, good use of the body. 
That's Grigurki, I reckon it is. Good contested ball, used his body at the last minute to shove his opponent out the way. It's this first game, first season I should say. Gurks is his nickname. Didn't, I didn't have to think very hard no. about a nickname for him, did they? Grigurki. <laughs> it's his first, uh, first year in the uh, in the Newry colours, that's a nice looking kick off the boot and it's straight through the middle over the top of the umpire's hat. That was an absolutely beautiful kick. Lovely kick. Nice goal to Newry. They are kicking, I'm going to say they are kicking to the aid of a breeze, but uh, we're yet to decide how big that breeze is. That's their third on the build. Third, three goals, 119. 16 point lead currently over the top of the Angston Panthers. A bit of history. Uh, Paul Oborn, the cameraman, and Tom. Uh, the Panthers is who I used to play for many years ago. The Gladstone Combine Panthers. So that was a very long time ago. Very long time ago. So it's nice to see the Panthers out there in the blue and white. Currently they trail by 16 points. Ball goes up, ball goes down. Adam's got the first touch on the ball. Once again, good piece of work by Rolak for Newry to get the ball down. They don't really care about how they're going to get a can. They're a bit of a chaos ball down into the wards the 50 metre arc for Newry. Ball makes it in there. A couple of players there, in, in, including uh, Grigurki, as well as uh, Tom Ryan. And the ball gets handed to the umpire for another ball up. You could probably throw a, a tablecloth over about 20 players down at the moment as the handball comes out to Argent. Argent, nice little handball. Once again, Angus to come out this far side towards the coach's box. And the mark's been uh, paid, or has the mark dropped? The mark's been dropped by uh, the player there. Anthony, as in Ben, and we'll have another ball in. Bounder up high is doing a good job. Good throw-ins. Good quality game so far. Good umpiring. Good quality here at Newry. Nice roving there by Pennelli. Had it, had it uh, forced out. Nice piece of roving by Scott Bentley. Handballs the ball. Looking for Hubner. Hubner goes in towards that player there and Bentley again. He's found himself loose again. He's going to do a dribble kick and it's gone through. That's another one to James Bentley. Used the body beautifully to get a couple of metres clearance. That was enough to get the ball and, a, and enough uh, speed to get away from his opponent. Another goal and well played by James Bentley, Tom. And it was good work in the forward line again. Yeah, yeah you see once Neary get their hands on the footy, they can use that breeze to get straight inside 50, which I'm going to say two or three goal breeze, Chuck. All right, OK. We'll go with two. We'll go with two. We'll go with two. But the trees, the trees aren't actually moving that much. It's actually a bit of a tricky breeze, but anyway, <laughs> we'll uh, we'll discuss that later on as well. We might have to do get a pitch report from yeah. Tom. We might have to get him to go out to the centre. But what we're also finding, Tom, is that Newey's getting the ball in and there's more space in their forward line, whereas uh, it's a lot more crowded when Angus didn't get a chance to go down in their forward 50. The ball goes up, ball goes down. Canelli, once again, good piece of roving to jump on it to stop the uh, to stop the Tigers from a clearance. Ball goes up again. Umpires have been busy. That's a lovely tap. Ends up uh, in the hands of the uh, Newry Centerman who goes down towards the Good grab. towards the 50 metre arc and a great defensive mark by the captain of Angerston Miles. Now in the hands of Murphy. Long sleeve. Not many long sleeves out there. It's good for commentators when players uh, have something a little bit different about them. And Murphy has the long sleeves. Good piece of use of body there by the defender in Norton. He's got his opponent out the way. Then grabbed the ball and was tackled straight away and the umpire comes in and says we'll throw it up. Norton makes his way back to stand uh, Ben Anthony. Anthony's been busy down there. Nice piece of work roving wise. Bit of a shimmy and a shake by the player there in Hood. But when he handballed it, he handballed it into the back of the player who wasn't watching. It's hit the ground. And Schmale picks up the ball and gives it to the umpire again. Fennell, once again a good tap. Oh, a dangerous tackle and the umpire's seen it that way. It was a good tackle by Scott Bentley. It was a bit too uh, oh, no. argy and a free kick's been given <laughs> for uh, for uh, a how do you do afterwards. Good umpiring again. It's a coach killer, that one. That is a coach killer. It was a dangerous tackle. The umpire was right on that, and uh, once again, should have just taken, a, taken the kick and gone on with it, but uh, free kick reversed. Nice piece of work by Angston. A series of handballs. Carnelli gets the ball back, but once again, good defensive work. That, to that time by Nichols, spoiling the ball, forcing it out of bounds. 
Good defensive work again. Boundary umpire's been busy. Throws, throws the ball in. Adams, good tap that time. No real clear advantage. Once again, there's plenty of players there to congest everything up. 23 minute mark of the first term as it's on the 50 metre arc for Newry. They currently lead by 22 points late into this first quarter. Once again, Adams versus Fennell. It's been a good contest. Fennell, great tap. Gee, that was a good tap. Straight down the throat of his rover. Bit of uh, tunnel balling happening there by uh, Nichols. Handballed the ball out, looking for the player there in uh, Kaleski. Once again, too much congestion and the ball goes up again. Ruck work this time won by Angerston. Clearing kick out of the uh, forward 50. Gathered by the player there in the coach for Angerston and Jay Shannon. He's forced out of bounds and have another ball in. You only have one boundary umpire each side here, Tom. Yeah, yeah, they're working hard. They are working hard. Doing a good job too. That's a lovely throw. Nice work. Fennell had the opportunity to grab it and run, but he uh, made a fumble. But he's gone back, picked it up, handball. Straight down the throat of oh, Rosenberg. That's, and that's a lovely kick by Rosenberg. He's been busy, Bentley. That's Scott Bentley. He's now within range. He'll be kicking basically on the 50 metre strike. 25 minute mark of the first term. He's not looking for any leads, as a good forward should. Or shouldn't, whichever way you want to look at it. He's going to be kicking from 50, almost exactly on the stripe, you would think, when he puts the ball on the slipper. Is it going to come around? It looks like it's coming around. It's coming around. It's a lovely kick. The goal umpire oh, says it's touched on the line. A bit of a premature celebration <laughs> by uh, Rosenwick. <laughs> Rosenwick went to congratulate uh, Bentley for the goal, but it didn't quite reach. It's gone force through. Minor score prevails. Angerston. Flows on from the goal square. Once again, another left legger. Lovely kick. Finding the player there in Tuckwell. Tuckwell looks down the ground. Very short pass. Keeping possession. Goes to Fallon. That's Will Fallon. Fallon goes inboard. Looking for that player in Tuckwell again who takes the mark. But as you can hear in the distance, that's the quarter time siren gone. And at quarter time, we can see the score being four goals, two, 26 to Newry. And Angerston, three minor, minor scores, a total of three. Here on SA Regional Footy, hopefully you're enjoying the coverage and hopefully you're enjoying this good quality game here in the Bross and White and Gawla Football League. We enjoy being here. We've been very well looked after by uh, Ben Giles, the president of Newry, and the, uh, the committee, and Josh, and the secretary. And uh, Nuri have looked after us beautifully on this Anzac Day. Hopefully everyone's enjoying their Anzac Day public holiday. Hopefully uh, everyone went to a dawn service this morning. Tom, you would have gone to a dawn service. Yep, yep, absolutely, in Tanunda. Yep, nice work. And uh, I was at the Gladstone one. So uh, it's very important that we show our respects for uh, all the service men and women that have, have uh, done so much for this great country of ours. If it wasn't for them, Australia wouldn't be as good as what it is. So, uh, special thank you to those uh, servicemen and women that might be listening. Certainly appreciate it. And uh, just um, nothing to do with football, but uh, I think it's great to see. I was speaking to the cameraman, Paul Oborn, earlier on this morning. The great thing about uh, the Good Dawn services that we go to nowadays is the respect that's shown by the youngsters. I reckon uh, out of 150, 160 people that were at the Gladstone one up in the mid north. I reckon probably 30 or 40 percent of them would have been under the age of 20, and I think that's uh, that's a good good tradition. And I think the well under the parents that are taking their kids along to all the services. As far as the service here is concerned, at the start of the A grade game, I think it was brilliant as well. So well done to everyone involved in, in uh, the service earlier on today here at the Newry Oval. Um, I think it was done very well and very tastefully. Had the bugle going, had the singing the national anthem very good one at Tom. Yeah it was yeah and I think we do really well in country footy SA on on these sort of days I think mo most clubs around the state would have paid their respects some way or another I think it's it's a great tradition and um, yeah country foods footy clubs do do really well. Like we've been saying if you're liking the coverage you're more than welcome to share it you're more than welcome to like it and uh, you can follow us and we, we do um, 
We do regional games every week. So uh, next week we're having the Malala, Tom. We're going to Malala taking on two worlds yep. in the Adelaide Plains Footy League. And uh, I think our next one at um, Rossa Light and Gawler is uh, Kapunda versus uh, South Gawler, I think, from memory, which is in a few weeks' time. So we're looking forward to that. But uh, we'll do all the finals and hopefully people are enjoying the coverage and the whole idea is to get around to as many regional clubs as we can and support regional footy and netball for that matter the best way we can so Tom uh, one thing that I didn't tell you you've been on work experience for me today is yep. uh, I'm going to ask you to be coach of the team that's trialing right. now you're you're in charge of Angerston at the moment what would you be saying if you were the coach of Angerston what would you be saying to your players uh, I th well, I think they need to be careful going inside 50 with the way Nuri is setting up. I think the, the intercept marks early, especially. Um, if you get your hands on the footy uh, at the bounce and then go forward, you, you've got to make sure you don't waste it going inside. So I think lower the eyes a bit more and take a bit more care going inside 50. Um, having said that, I thought Angston pretty did pretty well getting hands on the footy in the midfield and um, they look, looked very good early. Uh, goal scorers, Tom, up until quarter time. Uh, yeah, we've got four goal scorers, all uh, all goals going to Nuri, but uh, who have kicked four? Yeah, we got Grigurki with one, Bentley with two, and Hopner with one. And just to give you the heads up, I expect you to pick some better players for a half time chat as well, yeah. Tom, just <laughs> giving you the heads up. So uh, we'll go through some better players and we'll go through as much uh, special comments as we can as the day goes on. Ball makes its way back to the centre to start the second quarter here at the lovely Newry Oval. Good piece of work by Fennell again. He's got the tap again. Once again, didn't really go to any advantage. Fennell's in there trying to robe his own ball now. Nice work defensively in there by Ratcliffe, who's at the bottom of the pack for Angerston. And the umpire comes in to throw the ball skyward again. Ruck work once again. Fennell gets the tap. Once again, goes to ground. Once again, Ratcliffe's there at the bottom of the pack. Gets the ball, handballs. Nice work by uh, Bentley to get the ball and force it out. He was tackled without it, but the umpire didn't see it that way. As Angerston get the ball and goes down toward their 50-metre arc, two Newry players fell over themselves. But once again, that player in Norton, good clearing kick and fortuitously lands on the chest of the player there in Grigurki. Grigurki kicks it out. That's a lovely-looking pass. He did not have to break stride, Henke. Henke plays on straight away, having a shot on goal. But it's gone straight across the face. Is it going to go out of bounds? No, it's not. It's well kept in. Good piece of work there. Nice uh, one-two. Ends up in the hands of the player there in James Bentley. Still in the 30 metres out from the uh, Newry goal. Plenty of players come back to uh, try and defend. Uh, Wilfred has a snap with his left. He's not only missed all the goals, he's almost kicked it into the, about the third row of the car park. And it's out of bounds on the fall. That was brilliant by uh, Grigurki to... Uh, to kick that ball there to Henke, who did not have to break stride, running into forward 50 for Newry. Goes over the top of uh, Fennell. Uh, Wilfred obviously hasn't got a right leg, so he kicks a banana with his left. Goes in towards the 50. Nice work by Newry again. They've got numbers there. The umpire's seen a, th a push in the back after the tackle was given, and Newry will take a kick. That player being Matthews. Nick Matthews for Newry. He's had a look at a few leads. He's not sure about the distance, so he's handballed over to Hubner. Hubner kicks long. That's a nice-looking kick. Is it going to reach the distance? Good contest in there. Angerston are there in numbers. Series of a handball goes out towards the boundary line, and it's been forced out. And the umpire says, throw it in. Thanks, boundary umpire. As the player there in Shannon, good defensive work. Gives it to the boundary umpire, and the boundary umpire throws it in 15 metres around from the Newry left-hand side point post. Boundary umpire throws it up high, throws it in long. Beautiful work. Nice work again by the coach there in Shannon. He dives on the ball to contain it. The other player there was Nuri's Henke. Henke and Shannon on the bottom of, uh, on the top of the ball, I should say. And the umpire throws it skyward again. Once again, plenty of players there, so it's hard to get a clearance. Nice work by Shannon again. Gee, he's been busy down there the last couple of minutes defending. Good piece of work. I think that was Archer that got the ball. Kicks it down on his left, goes down towards the player for Angerston in, uh, in Cameron, Tom Cameron, but the boundary line beats him. And we'll have a kick in. Last possession, free kick. Oh, Goes to throw it in. No, the boundary umpire says, no, I want to throw it in, thanks. There's no free kick there. He throws his whistle away, interesting throwing in technique. Throws it in beautifully. Ruckman don't have a chance because they were both holding onto each other. The umpire rightfully let it go. 
Ball's hit the ground. Players have jumped on it. One of those players being Ratcliffe, who's been busy. And Fennell wins the tap. Nice piece of work by Nuri. Couple of handballs have cleared it out towards the player there in Gugurki. He started on the half forward line now. I think he's spending a bit more time on the ball during this quarter. And it's been forced out of bounds. It wouldn't have another ball in. Fennell, as Tom mentioned earlier, he's been getting his hand on it just about every time. That time he didn't have a chance to. Nice piece of work to, uh, there by Sanderson in the ruck for Angerston. He's forced the ball down. Goes down towards the 50 metre arc for Angerston. Nice work. Lovely pick up there by, by Westlake. But he's tackled straight away. No chance to get rid of it. And the umpire sees it that way. 40 metres out from Angerston's goal and we'll have another ball up. Once again, plenty of numbers down in that forward 50 arc for Angerston. Nuri not giving him much clearance at all. Nice pick up by the, the uh, Tigers player there in Jordan Fennell. Goes in towards the centre. Nice nice defensive work there by Nichols to grab the ball and handball it straight back to, to uh, a 1-2 situation of uh, Fennell as in Jordan. Nice little kick in to Bentley. James Bentley finds a bit of space. Kicks out towards the player there in Matthews. Matthews quickly gets it down to the forward line. Nice work by uh, Angerston. The player there in Ryan grabs the ball defensively. And he's tackled straight away by a couple of Tigers. No chance to get rid of it. I'm not sure how many times the umpires have ball, thrown the ball up in play, Tom, but it's been a fair heap. Very defensive play by both teams at the moment. Nice roving. I tell you what, that was a good snap. I think that might have been Laverty. I think that was Laverty for the uh, Tigers. Had a snap there uh, from the ruck contest. Snapped it, boomerang, boomerang around and uh, a goal to the Tigers. We'll just wait for him to uh, turn around. I think it was Laverty, Tom. We'll keep an eye on that player. Yep, yep, it was. It was Laverty? Yep. Nice work by the Tigers. Wasn't really an opportunity there for a goal, but uh, they found something out of nothing. As one of the Tigers players has just limped off, we might get a... Uh, an update on that. Looks like an ankle injury. I'm going to say it's Schmal, but uh, once again, I'll uh, I'll keep you updated on that. Looks like an ankle injury of some description to one of the Tigers players. As the ball goes up, the ball goes down. Doki gets the tap, but no real advantage. Ends up in the hands of Angerston's Murphy, who uses that beautiful left leg, goes down, trying to get as much... Uh, space for the forward line players of Angerson as possible. There's been a uh, marking infringement and it's going to the Tigers. Tigers player there in Westlake. Plays on straight away. Out on the far side. Lovely kick by uh, Murphy to get it down in the forward uh, 50 quickly but a free kick doesn't help you when it gets down there. Nice work again by the Tigers defensively on half back. Good handball out towards the player there in Henke who knew he was hot so he tapped it forward straight away knowing he couldn't take possession but good defensive work by Angerston setting up 40 metres out from the Newry goal. Good defensive work with a play on straight into the hands of Ratcliffe. Ratcliffe goes inboard looking for his coach. Shimmy in a shake and he goes out towards this far side wing near the uh, commentary box. Shannon kicks out towards uh, Tom Ryan and a bit of Shane Warne leg spin uh, beat him and it's ended up with a free kick to the player there in Rosenwick. Rosenwick nice kick looking for Hubert and uh, that was a good kick, but Hoobner tried to kick it in towards his leading full forward in Bentley, but it was cut off by the coach, Shannon, for Angerston. Plays on, little chip kick, over four and finding Grieve. Grieve, once again, little chip kick, trying to keep possession. Angerston goes to Nick Fallon. Fallon, still on the half-back line, 55 metres out from Newry's goal. Goes a little bit uh, down the line towards the wing area. Good contest of players. Nice piece of roving there by the player there in Tuckwell. The crowd thought it was tackled high, but the umpire didn't see it that way, and the ball remains on the wing. Good play there by Nichols. The dad of the team, we keep on saying. We might have to find <laughs> out why they call him the dad of the team, Tom. As the ball goes up by the uh, ruck, nice piece of ruck work there by Doki. Doki, good piece of ruck work, but it's ended up in the hands of a, uh, a little kick, and it goes to the player there in Anthony, as in Jaden. Goes down towards the half-forward line. They've got numbers, Angerston, if they can work it out with a quick handball. Argent ends up with it. Argent, lovely handball. Looks for and finds the player there in Haddon. Still in the hands of Angerston. They've got a clearance now. Nice handball by Hood. Goes towards the player there. Is it going to swing around? No, it's not. It's a minor score. I think that might have been Murphy that had a shot on goal there. It was a good kick. Didn't quite swing around enough. Minor score prevails. Tigers plays on straight away. 
as I dodge the uh, post that holds up the grandstand. Grigurki goes towards the wing over on the far side. Fortuitously bounces up for Bentley, who does a don't argue. The don't argue uh, was all very well and good, but he was too close to the boundary line. It's been forced out of bounds, and we'll have a ball in over on the far side. Nice grab by the boundary umpire over there. <laughs> Kicked in nicely, and uh, it was a nice mark. Currently 28-point margin in, far in favour of Newry. Both Ruckman. Doherty. Doherty and Adams doing the ruck work. No real clear advantage there. The ball ends up to uh, Grigurki, who's been very busy in this quarter. Nice defensive work shown there by Rosler. Rosler for Angerston. Goes down towards Carnelli. Carnelli spilt the mark, but he was good enough to go back and get it. Nice defensive work there by Newry again. They're there in numbers. Argent's there. Argent picks up the ball from shoelace level. Goes around, swings on his left. That's a lovely pass. Beautiful pass by Argent. Over on the far side and Angerston. They know they need to rush it in quickly. That's a great pass, but once again, there's numbers, but it's dropped out fortuitously. Is it going to be a goal? Yes, it's hit the post. Ben Anthony had a situation of had a bit of space. He did the dribble kick and it's hit the post, Tommy. And it's they're still yet to find their first major. Very unlucky. <laughs> Is that their second poster? I reckon it might be. It's one of the crowd from uh, the lovely Newry Oval. The, uh, the player in Schmal, who I just about wrote off as a bad injury and wouldn't see again, he's just uh, getting up and testing his ankle. So it is Schmal that hurt his ankle. We'll let you know whether he comes back on shortly. But uh, he's up and about and walking on it now. They've obviously re-strapped it as Laverty comes off as well to have a bit of a spell. No injury involved there. Ball's over on the far side. Boundary umpire who's very busy. Adams and Fernell have been doing a great job in the ruck. Ends up in the hands of Hoopner. Hoopner goes down towards the half forward line. Bentley handballs the ball out to no one in particular, just trying to get rid of it quickly to create a bit of space. And the ball's been forced out of bounds. Tom, uh, just out of interest, do you like the last possession rule? Yeah, I do. Yeah, and I, I don't think it gets used as much as people think. Like, it, it, it does need to be a clean possession out. Um, and I think it just opens up the... Keep, keeps the ball in play a bit more, opens up the game. and um, As Wilfred gets the ball, sorry Tom to cut you off there. Right. Uh, Wilfred gets the ball, goes down towards, oh gee, that's bounced beautifully for the fall forward there. That uh, Wilfred's whacked it on the uh, left boot, gone down as deep as he possibly can towards the uh, Newry forward line and it's, and it's done a right angle bounce. Ended up in the hands of, uh, I reckon that might be Doki. Doki got the uh, got the goal. It was a fortuitous bounce, but well played by Doki to be in the right place at the right time. Uh, back to what you were saying about the last possession, Tom. Yeah, no, I, re I, a bit? I really like it. Yep, and I think it keeps the ball in play. It keeps a bit quicker. Yep, um, and it doesn't get used too much. There's still plenty of boundary throw-ins as we've seen. You've had three rounds in Barossa Light and Gawler. Is this the first year that they've had last possession here? Do you know? Oh, I believe so. Yep. yep. Fennell versus Adams. Once again, both Ruckman have done a good job. Goes Skyward, Adams, great tap. Straight down the throat of Canelli. Canelli down towards the half forward line. Good use of the body there by the coach in Shannon. He gets his opponent out the way and then he chases after the ball. Gives a little shimmy and a shake and a tap to the player there. I think it might have been Argent. He had the ball and he dropped it. The umpire didn't see it that way though. Once again, nice work by Hood, who d went one way, then went around the other and then booted down as far as he could. Absolutely clean by old Carnelli. Went through his legs, <laughs> almost a nutmeg. End up in the hands of the defenders of Newry. Good piece of clearing work by Scott Bentley to get down the, the uh, wing. Now on the half forward line. Newry there in numbers. Nice work there. Ends up in the hands of the player there in Rosenwick. Rosenwick goes towards the goals. It's bouncing, it's bouncing, it's bouncing. And great defensive work there by Grieve. Ned Grieve, good defensive work to force it through for a minor score. He then gets the ball and plays on straight away. Angerston got some clearance over on the far side. Goes down towards the contest on the wing. Once again, over near the, the, uh, the scoreboard here at the Newry New Oval. Players there jump on the ball. One of those players being uh, Jaden Anthony. And no chance of getting rid of it. As Fennell and Adams have decided to go and reacquaint themselves again in the ruck. And good piece of work once again tapping the ball forward. Nice work. I reckon that might be Hoopner's that's got the ball. He was first to pick it up, but he's tackled straight away, including by Ratcliffe. And we'll have another ball up. Almost on centre wing on the far side here at the Newry Oval. Round three action 
and uh, a good clear and kick there by Tuckwell. Tuckwell gets towards the half forward line. It's one on one over there. It's a foot race. Nice work. Both players fall over, and the umpire's found a free kick, and it's going to go uh, which way? No, he's he's said that it's out of bounds, and we'll have a ball in. Boundary umpire's been busy. Umpires have been busy with throw-ins and throw-ups. 50-metre arc for Angerston. They need a goal. They haven't scored one yet. They currently trail by 34 points. 14-minute mark of the second term. Still on the 50-metre arc, and the umpire comes in to throw the ball skyward again. Ball goes up. Ball goes down. Fennell, once again, good tap. Ends up in the hands of Henke, but he hasn't got an opportunity to get rid of it. It's very tight and close. Bit of a swing tackle of uh, merry-go-round of uh, 360. The player of uh, Jordan Fennell did a 360 in handball, but once again it's been forced out of bounds. Almost have to do a uh, bit of commentary on the boundary umpires. They're doing such a good job. We'll have to find out their names, and uh, they've been excellent. Fennell does his own roving. Didn't even have a ruck contest then. It went straight into his lap. He played on handball, but once again, great pressure by Angerston on the air half forward line, trying to keep the ball in. The player there in Jake Hood had the ball and tried to barge through. He tried to barge through the tackle, but uh, was unsuccessful. As we've got a bit of a bit of um, gymnastics happening between the two of them over there, and Yuri will take the free kick. Scott Bentley, it was a good tackle. Hood was trying to break through, but he couldn't break through the Bentley tackle. Chip kick out, looking for Madden. Nicholas Madden. He's on the half-back line for Newry, looking at his option. Goes down. He's going to go down. He's going to go out. He's going to go almost landed in the coach's box. Out of bounds on the fall. Special mention of Tom Haslett. Special comments as well as Paul Oborn on the camera. Does a good job for us. As the ball comes in from Canelli. Nice pass to Argent. Argent swings around on that left. That's a lovely looking pass. The, uh, the player there uh, spilt the mark. Had to do a slips catch. The player there in uh, Durden spilt the ball and it's now back in the hands of Henke. Henke, last line of defence, has an opportunity, runs 10 metres before he kicks it. Nice use of the body there by Newry to get his opponent out the way and get a bit of space. There's plenty of space here now. Giles is the player. Oh, he's tripped over his own boots. He's got time to handball the ball to Bentley. Bentley, has he got time? Yes, he has. Gee, I'll tell you what, uh, Tom Giles with the orange boots, he... He, uh, he tripped over. It was nearly a disaster over there, but uh, well played. Handled the ball on to Scott Bentley. Bentley, plenty of time to run into an open goal. Newry up to seven goals, three, 45. 40-point lead now in favour of Newry. 16-minute mark of the second term. Yeah, you see the difference between the two forward lines, Chuck. I think Newry are, Newry are doing a really good job of keeping their forward line open. Uh, almost no no players in their forward 50 as they are running in. Angerson on the other hand, maybe a little bit congested down there at times. Fennell getting his hands on the ball in the centre is uh, restricting Angerson from getting the ball down quickly into their forward lines. The 6-6-6 six, six, six is a good rule, but you've got to get it in there quickly if you want some space. Uh, no 6-6-6 six, six, six in the brosser. Oh, there you go. No, so they can put one back if they like. Oh, or, OK. Yep. Oh, thanks for the... Uh, uh, that's, that's, why right. you're, that's why you're special. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Hoobner, G, I'll tell you what, that was out of the centre beautifully and that's a cl that's a class pass by Hoopner. Bradley Hoopner, lovely pass, very unselfish. He could have blazed away probably if he wanted to, but uh, lovely pass into James Bentley. James Bentley, no angle to talk about. I thought there was 666 everywhere, but obviously not here. No. Thanks for that, Tommy. That's all right. That's why you get paid the big buck. <laughs> yeah, that's it. James Bentley. Newry going for Newry's eighth goal. Very deliberate as an approach. Kicking from around 35 metres. That's a nice looking kick off the boot. Goal umpire just looked over the top of his peak of his cap and that's straight through the middle. Lovely play and uh, once again, great opportunity for a full forward. When you're leading into a space like that and you've got Hoopner putting it lace out on your chest. That's brilliant. Very good play. Very good play. So... Uh, Tell us a bit of the history of the. I mean, I know this is your first year. Who won the Who won the premiership in Brosselot and Gawler last year, Tom? Do you know? <laughs> we'll do some. We'll do some research. Yeah, I believe it was Gawler South. All right, we'll do some research. You might have to do some research. Uh, yeah. Plenty of great uh, quality footballers here. Adams gets the tap that time for Angston, but once again, 
Gee, I tell you what, Jenky's been, uh, Henke, I should say, henke has been busy this quarter. He went to get a kick away, but it was good defensive work by the skipper in Miles for Angerston. Gets the ball down once again, trying to get it down to the Angerston forward line as quickly as possible. But once again, good defensive work by Newry. Lovely work by uh, the players over there on the far side. Paul Oborn's got a couple of young kids that are looking about, looking around at the cameras and all the all the uh, computers around here. Hopefully they don't touch anything that uh, sets us off <laughs> sets us offline. <laughs> As the ball's <laughs> over on the far side, we uh, we might have to get some security here. Uh, half forward line for Newry once again. Huge amount of players over there, and it's been forced out of bounds, and the boundary umpire will send it skyward again. Big cheerio to those people that are listening. Hopefully you're enjoying the coverage. Boundary umpires doing a great job. There's only one on each side and they're doing a very good job. I'm glad it's not me that's covering the trip, covering the meterage that they are. Nice work again by Newry to get it deep into their forward line. Bentley tried to tap it forward into onto the running player, but Angerston once again there in numbers doing a good job to clear the ball out. Might not be clearing it very far because a good defensive mark by Tyler Billing. He was a late inclusion into the game. Nice little chip pass looking for Jenna. Jenna, who was very busy in the first quarter, a little bit quieter this quarter, but kicks the ball down into the forward line. Handball out to Bentley. Bentley swings it around on his right. Is it going to come around? Is it going to come around? Yes, it is, but not far enough. And a minor score to Newry. Really like uh, Hen Henke's game this quarter, Tom. He's been yep. very busy. And Hubner, and of course the ruck duel's been very interesting as well between Adams and Adams and uh, Fennell. 20 minute mark, just clicked over of the second term. Ball comes out and that player, Henke, good defensive work to knock the ball out and we'll have another ball in. Got a sheet here from the uh, both clubs talking about uh, the team, so we might uh, we might see whether we can find out something about some of these players. As the ball gets thrown in, I've been told uh, Squeak, Henke's nickname is, and he's been Squeak just got the ball then and was uh, was thrown to the ground afterwards. He's always good around goals, is what I've been told, and the free kick was paid down ground. Newry dominating this game, good defensive work there by J uh, Tom Ryan. Shimmy, shake, dodge, weave, little chip pass, getting it out of there. Their defensive 50 to Argent. Argent gets the ball to Murphy. Murphy, that lovely left foot kick, needs to be doing that more often. They need to get him de need to get him uh, kicking the ball down there more often. Every time Murphy gets the ball, he goes long, creates a bit of space, which I like, Tom. Yep, yep, Murphy's been good. Ball now on the half forward line for Angston. Up goes Adams. Good tap. Uh... Not sure what the free kick, might have been a shepherd in the ruck, but uh, Adams is going to take the resulting free kick. Adams for Angerston, too far out to score, probably 60 metres out by the time he puts it on the boot. He's put it up long, he's put it up high, looking for a forward line player, but once again, great defensive work by Newry. And that player is Westlake in the last line of defence, 15 metres out from the Angerston goal. Westlake got himself in front of uh, Anthony, as in Ben, and takes a good mark. Plays on straight away. Pretty ordinary looking kick, it's got to be said. But uh, Angerston are going to come kicking from 45 metres. That's a lovely looking kick. Is it there first? I reckon it is. Lovely kick. Gets the high five from his teammates all the way back down the, down the ground. He's gone from kicking a goal from 45 metres. <laughs> he's making his way back to half back, uh, Tom Haslett. Yeah, yeah, good kick for goal too. That was a good kick. We'll wait for him to turn around because we don't know who it is, but he's uh, going back in the defensive 50. I actually think uh, I That's think it might be the Miles. coach. Well, I thought I thought it was Shannon, but I might be wrong. We'll wait for him to turn around, but he's got high five from every every player on the ground. It's the first goal for Angerston. He's Jack off. Miles, I reckon. Jack Miles, you reckon? We'll, let, we'll have a look. We'll have a look very shortly when he turns around. You might have to keep an eye on him. He's uh, He didn't turn around, but he... He didn't turn around, but it was Jack Miles. It was the skipper. Well done, Tom. Great kick. There's the ball. Good defensive work. Worst thing about this uh, job, Tom, is when someone kicks a goal and they don't turn around and show you the number. <laughs> <laughs> as, uh, 
Jack Miles, who kicked a beautiful goal from 45 metres to be the first for Angerston, has just given away a free kick for an accidental in the back there over on the far side near the scoreboard. Play on the umpire calls, and that's exactly what Newry do. Kick down towards a pack of players. Someone's trying to uh, say that he marked it, and I think that Krugerke, who plays on straight away, looking down, looking for uh, Laverty, I think that is. That was a good mark under a lot of pressure by Aaron Laverty. He was behind his opponent, just gave him a little touch. All legal, all fine. Good set of hands, and he'll get the resulting shot on goal. Smack bang in front of the goals. As uh, I don't know whether you can see in the background, the, uh, the cockies. There are millions of cockies in the background, as in the bird variety. There's Laverty. Kicking from probably 30 metres, gets the ball to swing around beautifully, a little bit of right to left, and it's straight through the middle. That's the ninth goal for Nuri Upta. Nine goals, 4.58. They lead Angerson, one goal, 5.11. 24-minute mark of the second term here at the lovely Nuri Oval. Round three action of Barossa Light and Gawla Footy League. And it's a beautiful day, uh, beautiful day here at Nuri Tommy. I'm going to say 24 degrees is my tip of the temperature with a slight breeze. Lovely day here at Newry and once again being Anz Anzac Day clash was a uh, beautiful ceremony at the start of play. Adams going to be up in the ruck again. Fennell, he's been very good. The ruck contest between the two of them have been very good. Nice work there by uh, Newry to clear the ball out of centre. Gets the ball down. That's a lovely pass by Fennell as in Jordan. And the mark's been taken by Tom Giles. Tom Giles, not sure how he's related to uh, Ben Giles, who's the uh, president of the club. We might have to look in the uh, look in the notes that I've been sent. But uh, young Tom Giles with the orange boots, going to be kicking from around 45 metres. He likes his chances. Very deliberate in his approach. Kicking from 48 metres. Lovely looking kick, but it doesn't look like it's going to be. Uh, looks like it's going to be swinging to the left hand side of the goalpost, and it is, and it's a minor score. Look nice off the boot. Looks like Tom uh, having a shot for goal to the northern end. You need to go about uh, aim for the right hand side goalpost, would be my prediction. Fair call, Tom? Yeah, I reckon, I reckon the breeze has just picked up a bit. Yep. As Angerston kick in from full back. Diving attempt there by the skipper over there, but uh, it's on the 50 metre arc, and we'll have another ball up. Fennell up again against Adams. Once again, Adams, good tap. Puts it in the path of uh, one of the Rovers, but uh, nice work by Fennell, as in uh, Jordan Fennell. Gets the ball back for Nuria, shot on goal. I tell you what, that's a nice looking uh, goal by the dad of the team, Nichols. And uh, I'm not sure whether you got the celebration on uh, camera there, but it was an interesting look looking little celebration there, <laughs> uh, Tom. <laughs> William Nichols. Yeah, Nuri have been far too good around the footy this quarter. Those, the Bentleys, the Gregorkis, um, they yeah, they've been far too good around the footy. The the exact quote on uh, the exact quote that I've been given. William Nichols is Billy. The dad of the team. That is a quote from uh, that is a quote from the secretary of the New Rupta Football Club. So hopefully I don't get in trouble for that. Ball makes its way down to the 50 metre arc. Once again, nice piece of work there by the skipper of Angerston, defensively getting the ball. Oh no! Nice handball out, but uh, a bad kick resulted, and it's going to be a last possession free kick to. Grigurki, Grigurki once again pounds it into the forward 50 for, for Nuri. A handball, series of couple of handballs goes from, uh, goes to the Haddon and it's ended up in the hands of the player there in Ryan who goes down to half forward line for Angerston. Player plays on straight away. Once again trying to get some space down there. It's two versus one. The player for Angerston was held without the ball but the umpire wasn't in a position to be able to see it. Still down in the forward lines for Angerston. Player was being tackled around the shoulder, uh, around the uh, the hip area, but the w ball was being sat on. So I'm not sure how that uh, gets adjudicated. But Fennell for Tigers get the tap, 
once again to the advantage of Westlake this time. But Angerston's still in possession. They pick up near the shoelaces over there and he's been forced out of bounds. I think that might be Argent over there. He's forced out of bounds along with the ball. And the boundary umpire will throw the ball in. Argent's been busy, Tom. He has. He's been good. Ball gets thrown in. 25 metres around from the Angerston left-hand side point post. Ball gets thrown in, but no one really had a chance to do any ruck work to it. Ball's hit the ground. Plenty of players on top of it. The umpire's seen something. It's going to Newry's way. No signal from the umpire as to what the free was for, but Newry's got the free kick last line of defence. Player looks at the options. Plenty of players in front of him. There is no players in the second half of the ground. All players are down Angerston's half. That gives an idea of how Newry are setting up their defence. They're flooding the defence of Angerston's uh, forward line when they get the opportunity. Now a few players make their way back. Ball goes up. Ball goes down. Fennell takes the, the ball straight out of the ruck and is tackled and he dropped it. But once again, the umpire didn't see it that way. Banner umpire says throw it in. Thanks. 29 minute mark of this second term currently a lead of 54 points in favour of the New York the Tigers Adams versus Fennell Adams gets the tap goes straight to Fennell who threw the ball um, the umpire didn't see it one handed handball it was I think Tom wasn't it yeah <laughs> we might have got that on camera but it's been gone down a few metres and it's been uh, hello a bit of an argy bargy Hip on shoulder from the coach of uh, Shannon. There was nothing in it, but uh, the Newry player didn't like it much, being Fennell. Slung the player back. The umpire is saying, well, come on, guys, it's half time. Let's not worry about it now. As there's a bit of congestion around the players and the umpires over there on the far side. But uh, nothing to report, nothing to get too concerned about. Good half of football by the by the Newry Tigers, Tom. They've uh, been dominant. They've, uh, it's a very impressive first half of football by Newry. Score being 10 goals, 5, 65. 54 point lead in favour of the Tigers over Angston who are 1 goal, 5, 11. Here on SA Regional Footy Facebook feed. Hopefully you're enjoying the coverage. And uh, Anzac Day is a very important day for all of us and for Australia and New Zealand for that matter and a, lot, a great deal of respect was shown at the start of today's proceedings and uh, once again I know that we've mentioned it before but we'll mention it again uh, very tasteful and very impressive by the Newry Football Club all the netballers were out the front all the footballers were uh, showing their respect from both teams and the umpires as well and uh, very impressive had the bugle Tom didn't they had the bugle and and the drums and the uh, service men and women that were invited to join them out on the ground. I think it was a very nice touch, Tom. Yep, yep. No, Newry have, have nailed it. They've done really well so far. Um, but, yeah, the, the class around the footy by Newry has been, has been unreal in that, especially that second quarter. I think Fennell gets his hand on the ball most times when he's in there, and then the likes of Gugurki and Bentley and um, those guys around the footy looked looked. A, a class above in that second quarter so I think at half time Angerston might need to sort that out uh, is it as is it as simple as saying and I'm going to ask you what you'd do if you were Angerston and I'd, I'd ask you for some better players in a minute Tom but as far as the the footy goes is it is it a, a matter of the speed of how they get into their forward line is it as easy as saying uh, Angerston are taking a little bit longer to get it in there and it's giving Nuri a time to to flood yeah is, I, is it as easy as that or not uh, or maybe I think um, I think the Newry uh, on ballers and uh, even Fennell um, has been doing a really good job of setting up a kick or two behind the play as well. Um, so if they don't win the contest, they're they're flooding back pretty quickly, which sets them up really well to take an inset mark and um, get going forward. Big cheerio to all our all our listeners and uh, all of our viewers. Hopefully you're enjoying the coverage. Sometimes we may not get a chance to see your messages and sometimes we might not get a chance to reply to them because we might be busy doing other things, but uh, we certainly appreciate the feedback. And one thing that I will say is uh, Paul Oborn is the technical, he's the technical man. He does all the technical stuff and if it wasn't for Paul Oborn, 
who just happens to be a very important part of New York betting and furniture, as we as we plug the sponsors. Uh, if it wasn't for Paul, we wouldn't um, we wouldn't have this opportunity to bring you all these regional games. So we do thank Paul for his expertise and his technology, and hopefully everyone who's getting a chance to watch this and listen to this uh, appreciate that there's a lot of work that gets put in. He, he brings up about Tom. You you'll be interested. In, you, you don't you don't often. You don't often join us because you're busy playing footy yourself, but Paul brings up about 25 bags full of stuff to to uh, get this coverage done. He's got he's got three cameras, he's got three tripods, he's got three computers, he's got 25 microphones, <laughs> and along with that, he's got about six bags of donuts, five bags of uh, killer snakes, and uh, generally a, a six pack of a six pack of beer as well. Yeah, and he's going to get in. He's going to get in trouble if he keeps on putting us on the screen. Too. Yeah, I'm not sure about this camera. Yeah, yeah, that well, that's one of the cameras he brings up in his 25 bags. Yeah, but uh, also as far as the the coverage is concerned, the footy clubs and the leagues that are involved, I want to thank them as well. Obviously, I mean I know it's only half time, but uh, it's important to thank the people that make it possible. And uh, apart from the clubs and the leagues that make us feel very welcome, those sponsors that are now on the screen. Those sponsors do a great job in regards to the fact that they support us and they uh, they make it less expensive for the clubs and the leagues to have us here covering regional footy. And that's what it's all about, Tom. Covering regional footy, trying to get all the different leagues, whether it be the Air Peninsula, whether it be the York Peninsula, whether it be the Mid-North or the Barossa Valley, we want to get all the regional football out to, to our listeners and to our viewers. So uh, hopefully, hopefully you enjoy it. And being a Facebook being a Facebook feed, share it. If you've got an opportunity to share it, let more people see it. The more people that share it, the more people that like it, the more people will get to see it each week. So, as mentioned, Tom, we go to Malala next week, and uh, Malala versus Two Worlds is where we're heading next Saturday. And uh, you know the coach of Malala quite well, and a couple of the players there. Yep, Witty Liam Whitwell. Um, hopefully he's listening. Yep, he um, would be. No, that that'll be a good game at Malala. Yep. Um, is that their first? First game? Uh, I think no. it might be. Is no, it no, round one? No, no, no. Round one was uh, Saturday just gone. So oh, yeah, two. beautiful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Malala will be another a strong side again this year. Hopefully they've had a good good couple of years. So I'm sure Witty's witty has got them all sorted. And is the big Ruckman still playing for Malala, one of your mates? Yeah, yeah. Big William Hennessy. I think he's still still running around out there. So Actually, um, I'll tell you what, he, they wouldn't be listening. Do you know why they wouldn't be listening? Because they're playing. Uh, they're yeah, playing beautiful. at the moment. Yeah. Matalala are playing United, so uh, the Matalala guys wouldn't be listening, but they might listen to us later on. But, uh, yeah, uh, a lot of the players, a lot of the feedback we're getting from our coverage has been excellent, so we do appreciate all the feedback that we are getting. And, uh, yep, we've got the season pretty well booked out for all the all the games that we, uh, that we go to, and we really appreciate all the clubs and the leagues supporting us. Uh, now, Tom, as far as today's game's concerned, here at the Newry Oval, they've looked after us beautifully, but it's a 50, it's a 54-point margin in favour of Newry. Um, I think we we don't do stats. We we haven't got the uh, the ability to do stats on on uh, possessions and and uh, too much of the high-faluting champion data type stuff. But no. but uh, if you were to look at the scoreboard. I don't think it looks to be a nine-goal game because Ankerston is getting a fair bit of the ball, but basically when they get it in their forward 50, it's coming out. Yeah. Whereas every time it goes into Newry's forward 50, it's staying in. Once again, that sounds very simple, but how, how do you see it? Yeah, yeah, I think that's pretty much spot on. I think Newry probably had at a few more inside 50s, but I think they're getting it in there a lot quicker as well, which allows the forward line to, to go to work and... Um, yeah, a bit more space in the Ford 50, but that that slow possession that Angerston seemed to be playing um, give, gives Newry a bit bit more time to set up off the ball, which has been said a couple of times. But I think it's I think it is something at half time that the coaches will will talk about, um, and we'll see any adjustments they might make in the in the second half. If you're an umpire, or if you're an opposing coach of both teams who are some of the players that you think are doing well for both teams in, uh, no, in no particular order Tom? Uh, I think Fennell's um, ruck work has been excellent I think when he's in there Neary have basically won uh, won the footy um, but Grigurki has been very good in that second quarter both the Bentleys 
um, have been have been very good as well. Um, yeah, I've liked Jack, I've I've liked Jack Henke's Henke's yep. uh, game number twenty two for Newry. He's uh, had plenty of it. Yep. And yeah, yeah. Cole, Cole Jenner, Cole Jenner. Ev in the first fifteen minutes, every time the ball went down the uh, the uh, Angerston forward line. Uh, Jenna just kept on taking marks. I reckon he would have taken five marks in the first 10 or 15 minutes. Yeah. Uh, Jenna, so he had a good quarter. But uh, what do you think as far as the Angerston side of things go? I, I've liked Canelli's game. Yep. Uh, Jake Hood's been good. Uh, their skipper, Jack Miles, uh, not only has played well in defence, but he just roamed down and uh, kicked one. Kicked a nice goal. Yeah, kicked their only goal. So uh, the captain's done his job. Um the Anthony boys, apparently they're twins. I'm going to have to look at the research, but I'm, I'm pretty sure they're twins, so lucky we're not going on facial expressions because we have to go by numbers, which is good, because they, if they're twins, it might be hard to uh, <laughs> hard to pick them. I really liked uh, Jay Shannon's game as well, as far as the coach goes. He's uh, he's done a hell of a lot down back and has, uh, has stopped a lot. And we mentioned Jackson Murphy. Really liked Jackson Murphy's game in the sense that when he gets the ball, he uses that beautiful left leg to get it down into the forward line quickly now. Um, it's always easier when you're in a forward line situation to, uh, um, when there's a bit of space around, it's usually it's usually better for a forward line player. And with that long left boot that uh, Murphy's got, um, adds to a bit of uh, an advantage to the forward line. But it just doesn't seem to be showing on the scoreboard for Angerston, unfortunately, at the moment. And uh, you mentioned um, Fennell, uh, as in Simon Fennell the Ruckman for Newry. I think uh, Adams hasn't done a bad job no. in, the, in the Ruck for Angerston. He's, uh, the competition between the two Ruckman has been pretty good. So all that being said, it's a 54-point margin in favour of Newry. And, uh, yeah, a, l a few things are going to have to change for Angerston to uh, get back into the game, you would think. But uh, good quality game, good quality crowd, fantastic oval. Um, I haven't been to too many... Brosselite and Gawler games, obviously, Tom, but uh, you you haven't played here, obviously, yet, but uh, it's one of the better ovals, is it? Where yeah, it, look, it looks in great, Nick, and I think I think most of the Barossa clubs do do a great job in looking after their facilities, looking after the ovals, and, uh, well, most country clubs do, I guess, but, um, yeah, it's pretty good rocking up on a, on a Saturday or um, on Anzac Day, as it is today, and, and actually running out on a, on a beautiful oval, so... Um, yeah, it definitely, definitely looks the part. We didn't, uh, we didn't catch it on the camera because we were down the other end of the oval, but uh, the beautiful thing about regional football, well, football in general, is when you get the kids and the, and the families out having a kick for goal. And Unfortunately, down the northern end, the camera was down the southern end when it happened, but down the northern end, there was a young lad that just got an absolute beautiful falcon <laughs> while, he <wasn't laughs> while he wasn't watching. He's fine. He's back up and about, and he's having a kick. But uh, he wasn't watching as there was another ball coming in and uh, landed fair and square on his scone. So, bit of fun there. But he's he is fine. So that's good. Great crowd here at Newry on Nanzac Day, and uh, as we've been mentioning, the uh, Brosselite and Gawler League, the Newry Tigers team and the Angus Angerston Panthers teams have uh, made us feel very welcome. So, a big thank you. And once again, it should be said that the uh, Anzac Day ceremony at the start um, was very classy I suppose Tom there's always a little bit of controversy when you talk about public holidays and when you talk about Anzac Day and when you talk about this that and the other whether we should be playing regional footy and whether we should be playing football on uh, such an important day I actually don't mind it at all once you once you have a ceremony like we had today I think it's uh, great because a, a, a great deal of respect was shown and uh, you know what? It's great to see such a great crowd here today. And uh, I think certain, certainly the amount of respect has been very good. Do you, uh, do you like the idea of having footy games on Anzac Day? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think it's a good, a good little tradition we've got going. And um, yeah, as I said earlier, it's good to pay our respects on Anzac Day. And um, I think clubs, clubs do a good job of doing it on the Saturday as well, um, Anzac Day round. So um, oh, yeah, I'm a fan of it. Um, but um, yeah, I've never actually played footy on a Monday or a Tuesday or anything, so don't know. Be sore for the rest of the week at work <laughs> and everything. But um, no, I like it. I like sitting here watching footy on a on a public holiday, so it's good. It's half time here at the Newry Oval, and the Newry Tigers have made their way back out on the ground. And uh, while we're talking about uh, 
while we're talking about half time. Tom, what's the what's the score in the AFL? Uh, Collingwood taking on Essendon, of course, the uh, Anzac Day clash. Yep. What's happening there at half time? Essendon four goals six thirty. Uh, are trailing Collingwood six goal to thirty eight. So close game. Eight eight point margin in favour of the uh, Magpies. So there's another tip that I'd get wrong if that continues on that way. But anyway, that's okay. And uh, Tom, one thing that you should also remember, this is your virgin flight, as we've been talking about. You've, your special comments has been very good, and uh, it's the first time you've done it. Don't mention the Crows, okay? Because Paul O'Brien's yeah. the Crows. He's number one ticket holder, he reckons. He, reckons <laughs> he loves the Crows. And uh, them having a one-point win on the weekend, he's been, he's been unbearable. He's yeah. been so happy. He's been so happy. As the Panthers make their way out on the ground, like Argent's game as well. I'm not sure whether we mentioned him during the halftime break, but a uh, little left footer. He's, uh, he's been good, particularly in the first quarter. He was very good. In the second quarter, a bit quieter. But, uh, yeah, Argent's also started this game fairly well. Good players sprinkled amongst both teams. And uh, once again, as mentioned, the, uh, the crowd's great. The umpires have been good. Interestingly... There's two field umpires and two boundary umpires. Whereas in other leagues, there's four boundary umpires and three field umpires. So uh, I'm glad I'm not a boundary umpire. <laughs> Covering a half a ground each, that's uh, that's a very good effort. And, and, and it should be mentioned, they do a great job. So a, a special cheerio also to all those people that might be listening or watching that might like to volunteer their time, no matter where you are in the Air Peninsula or York Peninsula or... Mid North or wherever you might be, every league is looking for umpires. Every league and every town and every team are looking for volunteers. So you don't have to do it every week, do you, Tom? Just volunteer, no. <laughs> volunteer your time when you can. If I was boundary umpiring a half a ground, I reckon I'd volunteer once every three or four weeks because it'd take me that long to recover. I reckon, but uh, for those people that can volunteer a bit of time to their local club, it would be appreciated. And always looking for umpires. Nine goal leading currently for the uh, Newry Tigers here at the Newry Oval. Great quality game. Round three action here of the Bross and Light and Gawler footy. And Tom, uh, I'm not sure whether there's going to be any positional changes of, of the teams, but uh, Anguston need to do something to, to get this margin back a bit. As we... Um, as Mont as my special as my special comments man's run out of ink in one of <laughs> yeah. his pens we need to we need to make sure we keep the supply of pens up to him just uh, go through the goal kickers for us at half time as well if you can tom yep so i've got james bentley kicking three laverty two uh gugurki hopner doki and nichols all kicking one i um for those people that are wondering we we go around to all these uh, we go around to all these clubs and we ask for a bit of information on some of the players. So um, we found out earlier that Jack Henke's nickname is Squeak, and uh, Mitchell Norton's nickname is Cuddles. We've got some interesting nicknames here, Tom. But I'm, I'm not sure whether we should be um, whether we should be making it uh, making it common knowledge because we may get in trouble. <laughs> but uh, you know, someone like Cade, Cade uh, Rolak, his nickname is Cado. Now that's easy. That's not yeah. controversial at all. So uh, Scott Bentley, uh, Scott Bentley. We've been told that Scott Bentley, Scotty, or the better Bentley, because there's two Bentleys. Apparently, uh, Scott likes to be known as the better Bentley. Um, also, some of the information on uh, the Anguston players. Uh, young Ryan Connelly, who we uh, who we mentioned, is playing well. He's, a, he's an Anguston junior, and he had stints at Central Districts at Glenelg. So, uh, obviously, a bit of quality there. And uh, Jake Hood is only f seven games away from playing his 100th A-grade game. Tom Ryan, who's the vice-captain, is only three games away from his 100th game, and, and he played a bit of juniors at Central Districts. And uh, Jack Miles, who's the captain, is fourth-generation Miles player at Anguston. So, a bit of family history there. So uh, we mentioned the Antonys were twins. Well, Jaden and Ben uh, are twins, and they played in the under-15 premiership at, uh, for Anguston. So 
this is what we like about the regional footy. We come across some family ties and some, uh, some good stories along the way. Jay Shannon, who's the coach, is formerly from Tumby Bay. He's a Tumby Bay junior. Also played at North Adelaide, Port Adelaide, Wallaroo and Harndorf. So uh, Jay Shannon, obviously well-travelled. Jackson Murphy, we've been mentioning his lovely left boot. Uh, Jackson Murphy, he's new this year. He played a bit for Norwood and played against Western Australian country and also is from Paskerville down in the York Peninsula. So uh, there's a bit of highlights from some of the players from some of the teams. And thank you to both clubs as the three-quarter time siren starts to get us away. Benel, I'm not sure whether that counts as two taps because he did it beautifully twice. Nice piece of work defensively by the player in Miles, as in Jack Miles. We mentioned he was fourth generation Miles for Anguston. Well, he good did good defensive work there and it's over on the far side, still in possession of Anguston. Nine goal margin in favour of Newry. Here at round three action of Brossa, Light and Gawler. The ball goes down towards the 50 metre arc. Once again, Newry defence in numbers. Nice handball out from Grigurki on the half back line. He's played forward line, he's played back line, he's played in the centre, Grigurki. Still in the hands of Anguston. Series of two or three handballs. Nice. Canelli gets it from Argent. Argent, that's a lovely pass. Out in the in the, the area of the full forward, but good defensive work by uh, Newry to clear the ball out. Deep in defence and a lovely pass down the line. That player there in Madden getting the ball over to Rolak. Rolak down towards the half forward line. Anguston player didn't have it and the umpire saw it that way. Good umpiring. And it's an Anthony who's going to get it and it's Ben Variety. Didn't have the ball. Umpire saw it that way as well, which was good. Good umpiring. They've done a good job. Ball goes inboard. Goes to the skipper. Skipper plays on with the handball straight away. Long penetrating kick by Tom Ryan down towards the half forward line. Anguston, they've got plenty of the ball and, and uh, that uh, tackle went around the ears of, of uh, Tuckwell. Tuckwell handballs on. Ball now makes its way down deep into the forward line. Bit of a don't argue from the player there in Jenner. Gets the handball away. Nice piece of work to get it forward to Grigurki. Half back line, plays on straight away. Goes across, switching over. It's now in front of us in the commentary box. Good contested ball by Rolak. Good set of strong hands. Smack bang in front of us, in front of Jackson Murphy. Good contest, but good set of hands by Rolak. Rolak goes down towards the half forward line. Big, uh, big uh, cluster of players there. Anthony spilt the mark. Giles tried to tap it to his own advantage. Plenty of players there to stop it from going any further. One of those players being Grieve, who hands it to the umpire for it, throw it up. Half forward line for Newry now. Adams, nice tap. Once again, the player there for Anguston couldn't find the handle on it. It's been forced up. Hasn't gone 15... Oh, yes, it has gone 15 <laughs> metres. I was going to say it hasn't gone far enough, but the umpire thought it had. And Hoopner gets the ball and goes in, looking for the leading full forward. He's kicked it out beautifully. He's actually ended oh. up in the uh, hands of Wilfred there. Good work there by Giles to... Uh, get the tackling on the Newry player before he had some clearance. Might have tackled the player a little bit early, but once again, the timing was uh, almost spot on. The player he tackled there was Doki, and the ball gets thrown up. Doki gets the tap. Once again, hits the ground, so no huge advantage. Once again, you can throw a tablecloth over about 20 players. The umpire comes in for another ball up. 30 metres out from the Newry goal. They lead by nine goals early in the third term. Once again, good tap, very congested. Argent didn't have the ball, then got hot, got one high. Also was held onto. He could have got a, he could have got three, three free <laughs> kicks for that one. As Argent gets the ball, kicks good out kick. beautifully, looking for and finding Tuckwell. Tuckwell looks for a handball. He plays on. Not sure whether he's got an advantage there. Nice piece of work there to get the ball down the line. I think that was Murphy that did a little Way. sneaky kick down the line. Not sure why Tuckwell. Uh, handballed it to Jackson because it put uh, Jackson Jackson Murphy I should say because it put him under a bit of pressure wasn't a high percentage play and the ball's now in the hands of Grigurki really liked his game Tom Haslett will be doing the uh, best players at the end of the game for, for both teams I reckon Grigurki would be <laughs> figuring him at the moment nice kick out from Anguston defenders but it's been cut off by Bentley as in the Scott variety Bentley goes in towards the forward line once again the coach for Anguston, first to the ball in defence, gets the handball away over to Fallon. Fallon goes out towards the far side, looking for Anthony, as in Jaden, but it's gone too far over the far side. 
have gone over the line and we'll have a kick in. Kick in result will go towards Wilfred. Tez. Tez Wilfred. Lovely left kick. Left foot kick. Gee, that's got some distance. Nice piece of work to get it in the forward lines quickly for Newry. Snap on goal by the Newry player. And the boundary umpire says that's a out of bounds on the full free kick. Which will be taken down there by Murphy. The dad of the team, Nichols, was the one that had a snap on goal there and it's gone out of bounds on the full. Nice piece of work. That's a good grab if paid. Yes, it has been paid by Anthony. Anthony as in Ben. Good contested ball. There was a con congestion of about five or six players going for the contest and he was good enough and strong enough to take the mark. He hasn't got anything up forward. He's looking for options and he hasn't really got much so he kicks it down the line looking for anything. Anything possible. And that anything lands in the hands of Norton for the Tigers. Interesting to see what you think. Another left legger, Tom. Yep. It <laughs> goes down. Norton. Interesting to see what you think, Tom, but there seems to be no space for Angerston. And look at this space for Henke. Henke running into an open goal. Plenty of space. Plenty of options. Well played by uh, Norton initially on the half-back line to get the good clearing kick. And uh, Henke gets a well-deserved goal, creating a bit of space. Every time on the half-back line, Angerston get the ball. They look for options, and there's no options up forward. Yeah, yeah, and I think they've started to try and move the ball a bit quicker, but unfortunately, Nuri are still setting up beautifully behind the ball. There's not, not much movement up forward for Angerston at the moment, so uh, those intercept marks uh, keep on coming. Good piece of work by Hanke to get some uh, space, and uh, the notes that I was, I was given, he's good around the goals. Well, he was good then, and as mentioned, his nickname is Squeak. Sometimes it might be a good idea not to be given the reasons why some of these nicknames come out. <laughs> we, might, we might have to get a, a more updated PG version on our coverage. The ball goes skyward. Umpires are being good. Once again, Adams gets the tap, but it goes straight to the opposing Ruppen, which is Fernell. Fernell goes down looking for Jenke again, uh, Henke again. Henke gets the tumbling mark, then plays on straight away. Once again, looking for some space. Angerston have got the numbers there. Nice piece of work defensively by the player there in Grieve, but... Once again, no real clearance at the moment. Looking for options. Ball comes out and finding Fallon. Fallon, little chip kick, looking for Murphy. It's gone over the top of him, but he's good enough to get it himself. Being forced out of bounds. Once again, Nichols being there and uh, forces it out of bounds. Carnelli and Murphy uh, had a little bit of space there, but the ball went over with a bit of clearance over their head and that uh, didn't bounce fortuitously for them. The ruck work, nice soccer by Bentley. Bentley kicks out towards uh, Rolak on the on the uh, soccering attempt. There's that man, <laughs> there's that man Henke again. He's good around the goals, but this time unselfishly, he kicks it in unselfishly. A series of a handball goes over the top and nice piece of work by Doki, I think it was, that got that goal. Is that Doki that got the goal there, Tommy? It all happened fairly quickly. Nice piece of work there by uh, Henke. But uh, he kicked he kicked the ball inboard unselfishly, but it was judged not to be uh, 15 metres, so it was play on. Handball out and uh, nice goal resulting. I'm gonna give it to uh, I'm gonna give it to Doki, Mitchell Doki, that goal. Yep. If I'm wrong, I'm sorry. Yep, 32, yep. Cameraman Paul Oborn, not only is he the cameraman. He keeps an eye on what's going on as well. Doki got that goal. Once again, nice piece of work by Adams. Gets the tap. Nice work. Gets the ball down. Good defensive work again by Tigers. Gee, they're good around that half-back line. Kicks the ball down towards the half-forward line. And that player in Rolak has been very busy this quarter. Gets the ball moving. Once again, the Tigers get it moving quickly every time they get it. Nice work there by the skipper for Angerston. Handballs the ball to Canelli. Canelli, nice little chip. Angerston trying to keep possession. Now, things slow down around the half-back line. They look at options, and they kick it in board towards Adams. Once again, Newry not giving him a chance to have any space up forward to run into quickly. Good piece of work to get it down towards the wing. Contested ball once again. Norton, very busy. Kicks the ball with his left, fortuitously lands on the in the hands of Grigurki. Grigurki plays on. Rolak, 
he's getting a heap of it this quarter and that's a lovely Good pass oh. didn't quite reach the distance the big ruckman in Adams does a bit of roving oh he does a one two hello he's going to do one two twice no he's not he doesn't get the second attempt Angerston goes down towards the half forward line once again Tigers, Tigers there in big numbers handballed it out and it's been a judge to throw good umpiring player there went for a handball and it was Madden and he didn't get his fist so it's been a judge to be a throw. Angerston try and keep an open forward line. Good piece of roving by Argent. Argent on his left swings around. Is it going to come around? No it's not. It's a minor score only. Good roving by Argent. Good play. Good play by Angerston to get the ball into the forward line quickly. Create a little bit of space in the contest. Newry were there in numbers but a good piece of roving by Argent. Ping on goal left-hand side of the goalpost. Brings the margin back to 65 points. Newry very dominant in this game. Good quality game here at the Newry Oval. Hopefully you're enjoying the coverage. As we mentioned, heading off to Adelaide Plains Footy League with uh, Malala versus Two Worlds next week as the ball comes in. Bounces over the top, uh, but nice piece of work defensively by Billing. Billing, uh, Hamble goes to Rolak, who's absolutely got his name on the footy at the moment this quarter. Lucky you haven't got a pen for stats, Tom. You'd be running out of ink on Rolex name. He's absolutely killing it this quarter. Boundary umpire who's done a good job. Throws the ball in. Nice piece of work. Oh, lovely work by the Ruckman in Fennell. Gets it to Bentley. Bentley into Gregorki. Gregorki goes long. Bentley's down. We'll keep an eye on Bentley. He got a good hip and shoulder as he got rid of the handball. The uh, Henke down there. Good defensive work there by Angerston to get the ball and, and clear the ball out. Over to the far side. And the player there in Jaden Anthony has the ball. He goes inboard looking for Canelli. Canelli's been good for Angerson. Liked his game. Little chip ball looking inboard. And once again, the long sleeves of Murphy. Once again, that beautiful left leg, but this time it's been cut off by Norton. Norton's been busy this quarter as well for the Tigers on the half back line. Looks at his options, just chips it over the top to Fennell. Fennell, the Ruckman. Kicks to the dad of the team. Got rid of it just in time, Nichols. Goes down towards the forward line. Lovely kick. Once again, 45 to 50 metre pass by Nichols. And Tigers, a bit of space in the forward line, Tom Haslett. And uh, speaking of Bentley, James Bentley is going to be having a shot on goal. Liked, liked the way they get it in there quickly, Tom. Yeah, yeah, and I think Angerston... Um, are just getting killed across their, their half forward line. I think there's not, not too much movement happening and um, the Neary, Neary backmen are good enough to cut it off and, and get it going quickly, which is going to result in another scoring shot. For a right of reply, Tom, we were told that Scott Bentley is the better Bentley. Yeah. That was the nickname. For a right of reply, what does it say about James Bentley? Uh, 2021 leading goal kicker. Well, there you go. I'd rather be known as the 2021 leading goal kicker rather yeah, than well, the better Bentley, wouldn't you? They've both been pretty good today, so um, wouldn't mind being either of them at the moment. Well, James Bentley, the leading goal kicker in Brosser and Light last year, and he's kicked one out of bounds yeah. on the ball, so we put the mockers on him anyway. The ball makes its way over on the far side. Good work there in the contest, but the umpire's seen something. It might have been in the marking contest, and the free kick's going to Newry. Love the fact that uh, nicknames and uh, little remarks along the way. A few sniper, few sniper remarks uh, by the secretary, and thank you for the clubs for sending through the information. As uh, the skipper of Angerston gets the ball in deep in defence and chips it over, Grigurki gets the ball. He's been busy. Hambles to uh, Wilfred. Wilfred goes inboard. Nice defensive work by Angerston to clear the ball outside of the 50 metre arc. It's two on two. I don't argue like that from uh, Tuckwell. Tuckwell goes down the wing. Got a little bit of space now. Let's put the heaters on. There we go. Argent takes a bounce. Play on straight away. Onto the left boot. Goes down towards the set, the centre corridor. Angerson still has the ball. Player there does a bit of a shimmy and a shake. He forces the handball out, but it doesn't go to his intended target. Durden handballed to, um, to Argent, but uh, the ball was blocked slightly, and uh, Argent had to get it to try and contain it, and he did, and we'll have another ball in. A uh, ball up, I should say. Fennell taps the ball. Good piece of work. Good pick up there by Hood. Goes out looking for the player there in Anthony, as in Jaden, who puts it on the left. And good defensive work again by a guy who's been very busy this quarter in Norton for the Tigers. Liked his game, Tom. 
Yeah, he's been excellent this quarter. Swings it onto the left leg. That's an ugly looking helicopter kick, but it's <laughs> ended up in the hands of Wilfred. Wilfred spilt the mark, jumps on top of it, and he's jumped on. And the umpire comes in to throw the ball up, and it's been thrown over his head, so he's got to go back and get it. Umpires have been good, Tom. You like the umpires today? They have, yep, yep. They've been good. They're disguised as green to make sure no one yeah, notices them on the oval. It. I think that's a joke we cracked it a bit earlier, so we shouldn't overuse it. Canelli gets, <laughs> <laughs> gets the ball. Handballs, doesn't go to his target though. Angerston still has possession. Good piece of work by, I think that might have been Anthony over there to uh, get the ball a, a few metres further forward for Angerston. Still on the ground, so players jump on it and we'll have another ball up. Up goes the ball, down goes the ball. No real advantage as far as the ruck work goes there. I think that might have been Sanderson that might have got the, uh, the touch in the ruck there, but no real advantage, and we'll have another ball up. Where's Sanderson? Good piece of body work, but it's won by Fennell. Once again, no real advantage. Plenty of players around the ball, and once again, the umpire will come in to throw the ball skyward again. 16-minute mark almost of the third term. Currently a 65-point lead to the Tigers. Here, Barossa, Light and Gawler, round three action. Beautiful Newry Oval. Once again, Fennell. Great tap straight down the throat of Hoopner. Hoopner gets tackled and the ball, ball's forced out. Jordan Fennell gets the ball on his left boot, goes down towards the wing. Nice piece of work by Anthony. Get the ball over to his uh, Angerston player to get it down, deep down into the forward 50. But once again, defensive work by the Tigers. Ends up in the hands now. Short pass goes to Hoopner. And Hoopner, once again... Gets the kick in the defensive 50. Looks at his options. Decides to go across. Finds a bit of space over here with the player in Madden. Madden goes inboard. That's a lovely pass. Looking for Wilfred. Wilfred swings around on the left boot. That's a lovely looking kick. Plenty of space down there. Plenty of Angerston defenders. What's going to happen? Bit of body work by the Angerston player. That's Bentley who's got it. He's done a banana. How's it going to bounce? It's going to bounce fortuitously for Nichols. Nichols, shimmy, shake. Goes inboard. Good spoil by the Angerston defender. I think that might be Anthony down there. Great work by the Angerston defenders. I think Newry had the players, the numbers there. Uh, great work. I think that might be. I think that might be Jaden Anthony down there, Tom. That was great defensive work by yep. Angerston. No, it was. It was very good. I just noticed that Nort Norton has been sitting a kick behind the play by himself in defence. So he, his name seems to be coming up a lot. I think it might be because he's he's back there intercept marking and no one's no one's getting anywhere near him. It's the only way I used to get a kick. Yeah. Mate. <laughs> anyway, the ball's ended up coming down the forward line uh, or down, down towards the centre. A great defensive mark by the ruckman in Fennell. Really liked his game, Tom. Fennell, Simon Fennell, very good player. Liked his game all day. Ball makes its way down to the forward line. Once again, good contested ball. Good spoil from behind by Grieve. Nice snap on goal by Bentley. It's not the better Bentley. It's the leading goal kicker, Bentley. And uh, that is James Bentley. Leading goal kicker from last year. Goal umpire went straight over the top of his hat. Nice, nice snap there by James Bentley. How many is that he's kicked now? He's got, I've got him down for four. Rightio. Great work by the Tigers. Once again, for the amount of ball that's going into the forward 50, Angerston have done a pretty good job to uh, contain Newry because it's going down there a fair bit, Tom. But yeah. uh, once again, 71-point margin. Plenty of ball going down. Newry's forward line is uh, hard on the defenders, but they're uh, doing what they can. Coach has gone into the centre now for Angerston. That's Shannon. Ruck goes up. And that player, Shannon, is the first one there. Canelli liked his game. Gets the handball out. Nice work with a series of a couple of handballs. Still in the hands of Angerston. Getting down towards the half forward line. That player, Norton, is the first one there. He had an opponent. He wasn't on his own that time, but he did very well. But he's handballed the ball. <laughs> <laughs> he's handballed the ball to Hubner, who goes out of bounds. And the boundary umpire says, am I going to throw it in? Or is there going to be a free kick? The umpire and the boundary umpire have decided it's going to be a kick to Jake Hood, who just wandered in and taken the free kick. I don't know sure whether it was his kick, but he's, oh kicked, no. it <laughs> he's kicked it straight out of bounds on the fall. I think it would have been a mark to Norton anyway. Norton for the Tigers, deep in defence. Funnily enough, he's over there, and there's a number 34 for the Tigers over there, Tom. 
who's actually obviously a B-grader because he's still on the... <laughs> still <laughs> up, <laughs> he's, a, he's a member of the crowd. I thought we'd have to do a, 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 a player check, but he's a member of the crowd wearing a Guernsey. Ball makes its way back to the centre. Adams, good tap, but it goes straight to the player in Grigurki, who's played a very good game as well. He's tackled by Shannon, and we'll have another ball up. Special mention of the sponsors. You can see the sponsors of the uh, of the telecast on the bottom of your screen as Carnelli gets the ball down. Good defensive work again by Norton to smack the ball out of bounds. As... Uh, Oh, number 34 is actually playing, but he's on the bench. Yeah. He must have been warming up down there, Tom. So a bit of confusion there. Number 34 being uh, Rosenwick. He wasn't a part of the crowd. He was just warming up, ready to come back on. 55 metres out from the Anguston goal. Grigurki tackled by Hood. The ball goes up again. That's three up. I'm not sure whether there's a three up rule here, but it should no, be. No, there's not. There's not a, gee, there's a couple of rule yeah. changes here. <laughs> It was, th it was a third man up, but it doesn't matter because it's a free kick anyway. I think that's going to Sanderson. Where's Sanderson? Doing the ruck work, positioned himself well, and gets the resulting free kick for a high contact. Kicks the ball down. Once again, there seems to be a lot of Tigers Guernseys down there in defence. Nice work. Ends up in the hands of the coach and Shannon. Oh, well done. That's a very good piece of work by the coach of Angerston. He could have blazed away again, but he didn't. He looked for his option and landed a beautiful pass to Hood. Jake Hood. Jake Hood, seven games off his 100th game for the uh, A grade. Let's see what he's like at a kick of goal. Not much of a breeze to talk about. Kicking from 45 metres, that's a lovely looking kick off the boot. That has gone straight over the goal umpire's hat. Lovely kick and it's their second goal for the day. Very good play by the coach in Shannon to uh, not blaze away, which you could easily do when you're in the position that he was in. He uh, lifted his eyes, had a look at the options, and a beautiful pass and a beautiful kick on goal from Hood. Good play that time, Tommy. Yeah, yeah, a bit of class. And I think that's that's told the tale of the day. Um, Neary have flooded their, their back 50, and it, and it takes a pinpoint pass like that to have a shot on goal for Angston. Yeah, so good call. Good call. 22 minute mark of the third term. Lovely day here. Very respectful day for Anzac Day Clash. As Canelli, once again, he's been busy. I've liked his game, Tom. Ends up with a handball going to the Ruckman who was tackled straight away. Nice work by the Tigers to clear the ball out of centre. Once again, going deep, going long. Bentley gets the ball. It's going to end up in the hands of the dad of the team, Nichols. Nichols, great handball. Nice work looking for Fernell who's resting down at full in the forward lines. He's got three players against him, so he just taps it out. High tackle, wasn't seen by the umpire. The player there might have been a bit unlucky in uh, Fallon, Will Fallon. He came uh, came out of a, a pack and got one high, but the umpire didn't see it. But the umpire will throw it up. And good piece of work by the Ruckman there in Adams to get the ball to his uh, rover. But Grigurki does a bit of stealing and gets the ball. Series of a couple of handballs. Comes back to Matthews. Matthews goes with a grubber kick in towards the forward 50. Argent's there. Ball's on the ground, he's on the ground. The player there in Schmal is on the ground who hurt his ankle a little bit earlier on today. Good to see him back on the ground. Adams, once again, good tap. Straight to his uh, rover, but once again, no chance to clear. And once again, Adams is probably... Uh, oh. Adams probably is not winning as many rucks as what Fennell is, but Adams is doing a lot of work around the ground, Tom, which is good as well. Yeah, he is, yeah. Free kick being given. Did you see what that was for, Tom? Sorry. Yeah, I think it was a late late tackle um, on Giles there. So, what do you think of the orange boots, Tom? Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, they're all right. They're they're good. As we talk about the orange boots, the orange Bit boots, of flare. the orange boots are the same colour as the water boys, high vis high vis jackets. That doesn't mean anything in particular, but anyway, Tom Giles, 45 degree angle. Very deliberate as an approach. That's a nice looking kick off the boot. Is it going to come around? No, it's not. It's a minor score. As he takes his mouth guard out of his sock. And the ball comes in. Finding the skip of Giles. Liked his game. Giles. Hambles. Series of a couple of handballs. But once again, a little mistake. And ends up in the hands of Henke. Henke. Nice handball there to uh, Giles, who has another ping on goal. Going across the face. And we'll have a kick in to Angerston.
Angerson. Trailing by, what's that, 66 points, 11 goals. Goes over the far side. Once again, Tigers are there in numbers. Getting a little bit darker and a little bit colder here. We might have to get the cameraman putting a jumper yeah. on in a minute. <laughs> as Sanderson, gee, you, the Ruckman did well to do a bit of a shimmy and shake. He did the handball and the uh, player wasn't quite ready for it. Still on the half back line for Angerston and the umpire comes in to throw the ball skyward again. Great day here at Newry. Been a fantastic day. Great Anzac Day traditions shown at the start at the ceremony at the start of the play. Argent, geez, done well to get out of that situation. Gets the ball and uh, slings over towards the centre. Nice pick up by Rosler. Rosler back to Argent. Argent goes out this far side towards the coach uh, towards the coach's box. And for bigger, for Biger, for Biger, I'm going to say. Hopefully, I'll pronounce that right. Gets the ball and goes down towards the half forward line where Hubner's there, and forces the ball. Not sure what uh, Paul Oborn, the cameraman, is saying. <laughs> he forgets when he when he when he mimes something. I can't understand him. You're going to have to write it down if you're telling me something, cameraman. As the boundary umpire throws the ball in on the 50 metre arc for Angerston's forward line. Nice work by Sanderson and Fabiga there. Nice handball out to Sanderson. He goes down towards the forward line. Great, great by kick. the uh, forward line player. Good work there, but I'm not sure whether I've pronounced his name right. Uh, Fiberger. Number 32, and also Sanderson, the big fella in the ruck, getting the ball down quickly, and Tuckwell will have a shot on goal. Once again, got the ball in there quickly. Tuckwell, good contested ball. Smack bang in front as the three-quarter time siren goes. To say that they need this one's an un understatement. <laughs> Going to be kicking from around 30 metres. Looks all right from here. Looks all right to the goal umpire, and there's the two fingers showing that it's straight through the middle. Nice kick by Tuckwell. That brings the margin back to 60 points. A, a nice clean 10 goal difference between Newry and Angerston three quarter time here at the Newry Oval. And it's got a little bit darker, a little bit colder, uh, Tom. It we'll, has. We'll, yep. get, we'll get you to th go through the, the goal kickers for us here at three quarter time, and then you can put a jumper on <laughs> so we don't get pneumonia. Yeah, so for Newry, we've got uh, James Bentley with four, Laverty two, Doki two, uh, Grigurki, Hopner, Bentley, Heinke? Yes, Henke. I'm, Henke? Going, I'm going Henke. And Nichols all with one. Um, and Angerston with the three goals now to Hood, Miles and Tuckwell. Do you notice when you come and do some commentary and special comments, there are not a lot of Smiths? <laughs> no, <laughs> we've got some interesting we've got some inter interesting pronunciations of names. So uh, we do apologise to those uh, families if we're not pronouncing if 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 we're not uh, if we're not pronouncing the names right. We do apologise for that. It's not intended. It is is just our our lack of <laughs> our lack of knowledge of how to pronounce <laughs> them. So we do apologise for that. But there were the goal kickers up until three quarter time. The Tigers in command. Ten goal margin in favour of the Tigers here at Newry. And uh, Angerston certainly haven't been disgraced. They've had plenty of the ball, but uh, it's about their forward line dominance at Newry versus the uh, the back line being well structured in uh, in Newry's favour. So uh, Angerston certainly wouldn't be ashamed of uh, their game up until now. But uh, once again, a ten goal margin tells a story, I guess. Yeah, yeah, and I think Angerston that third quarter were were a lot better. I think they would have been a lot happier with the way they tried to move the footy at least. Um, but yeah, a couple of um, good players in Norton and um, a couple of guys in Newry's defence playing well as well. Um, Newry quite good at taking their opportunities as well in 13 goals, six. Um, pretty good in front of goal. Jay Shannon, the uh, coach of Angerston, um, talking to a couple of other guys uh, at three-quarter time. Those couple of other guys are obviously assist assistant coaches of some description, you would think. Now he goes back into the... Uh, Goes back into the huddle with the players and uh, they have a bit of a, a chat. Ten, goal is, ten goals is the margin on Anzac Day here at the beautiful Newry Oval. The coach of uh, Newry would be pretty happy, you would think. And uh, there's not a great deal of um, injuries to talk about either. There's been a couple of ankles and a couple of uh, small corkies, you would think, but 
no major injury issues to report from either of the teams, which is which is good. But uh, when we talk about Anzac Day, we talk about the spirit of Anzacs and the spirit of the game. The spirit of the game's been brilliant. And uh, once again, we've mentioned it throughout the whole coverage, but uh, well done to the league, Barossa Light and Gawler. Well done to Anguston Football Club and well done to Newry in particular being the home team. Uh, their um, Anzac Day respect has been shown and the, uh, the whole day has been very well run. As, uh, as we look down in the grandstand on the, on the grassed area and there's a lovely looking dog there. Tom, is that a, is that a, a Cocker Spaniel crossed with a Labrador? I have no idea. No, neither have I. But anyway, we're not here to, <laughs> we're not here to talk about. There we go. What sort of dog's that, ladies and gentlemen? That's a lovely looking puppy. He's obviously very concerned about something that uh, he's looking at. But anyway, cameraman Paul Oborn's got the uh, got the dog in the picture. Three quarter time. One thing we've also mentioned a couple of times, and we'll mention again, the respect shown to the uh, servicemen and women at the start of the game as well. The lineup at the start of the coverage, you'll see all the players, all the footballers, all the netballers lined up to show respects. Well, the Newry Football Club invited all the ex servicemen and women out there as well which was a very very nice touch so to Ben Giles and to the U Newry Football Club well done as the ball goes up and once again Fennell good tap for Newry it's ended up in the hands of Angerston the series of couple of handballs and Canelli gets the little chip kick out looking for the player in Hood I've liked Hood's game as well and uh, while we're talking about Hood he tackles uh, Jagurki Jagurki also been very good bit of a shimmy and a shake and dodging was the player there in uh, Fennell as in Jordan. It's made its way down into the forward line for uh, for Newry. S sling tackle on Giles, who's been a judge to be holding the ball. Good tackle there by Ryan, as in Tom Ryan, who uh, is now asking for a 25-metre penalty for someone running across the mark. And the umpire said, yep, no worries at all. You can have that as Ryan plays on and goes outboard looking for an ugly-looking kick out towards that far side, looking for his coach. It's been chopped off by Newry with Hoobner. Oh, great grab! Gee, that's a good grab by Anthony. Ben Anthony, good defensive mark. Looks down towards the wing. Shannon plays on. Little kick in towards Hood. Hood goes down the half forward line. Good work there. I think that was Westlake coming through. Good handball to Wilfred. Good shepherd also by Westlake. A bit of a, a one percenter. No, and no. Wilfred's got some space and kicks down into some space. And I'm going to guess it's a Bentley because every time it goes down there, it is a Bentley. And it is a Bentley. It's James Bentley. Leading goal kicker from last year. Found himself uh, wandering around the forward line like an unregistered dog while we were talking about dogs earlier. And takes an uncontested mark. Leading goal kicker from last year, James Bentley. Going to be kicking from around 45 metres. Not much of an angle to talk about. He'll aim it out right. It'll come back. He's aimed it out right and it hasn't come back enough and it hasn't got the distance that's been forced over the line. Good defensive work by Angerston for a minor score. Not sure about the breeze, Tom, but the uh, temperature's certainly dropped a few yeah. degrees. <laughs> the, old, uh, the old temperature check, we'll have to do that shortly. Ball comes out, nice pass, nice kick to Rosler. Rosler gets the ball inboard looking for Murphy. That's an ugly bounce and it's ended up in the hands of Bentley as in Scott. Goes in looking for the leading goal kicker in James Bentley. Bentley to Bentley. And Bentley will have another shot on goal. Bit of an error by Rosley. Just a bit of a skill error and it's ended up in the hands of the full forward for Nuri Upta. And James Bentley is going, going for his fifth, I'm going to say, Tom. Is that right? Yep. That's a lovely little kick off the Good boot. Flag. That is a beautiful liquid kick. Ended up halfway up the gum tree at the back of the goals. Goal umpire didn't have to work too hard to have a look at that one. And uh, well played Bentley to Bentley. James Bentley's fifth. Yeah, and Angerston have done done a good job of getting the ball and getting it on the boot. But they've two, two small skill errors have um, cost them two shots on goal and seven points. So... Um, coming up against the coming up against the good sides in the competition, the, those little skill errors really hurt in the middle of the ground. Uh, Collingwood up by a point with a minute to go in the third quarter um, in that game, so that, that that looks good as well. Don't go and watch it. No, nah. stay, <laughs> stay and watch this. 
Adams in the rut, taps it to himself, picks it up. Once again, I've liked Adams' game, Frankston. Nice piece of work. Ends up in the hands on the forward line, Frankston. Goes down deep into the forward pocket. Good piece of work. Good contest again by Norton and the player there in, in uh, Grieve, who's made his way down to the forward line. Two on one. Newry, Newry player being tackled by a couple of opponent, opponents. That player being Matthews. Ratcliffe was one of the tacklers. As the ball goes up, there was no Ruckman for Angerston, so uh, Fennell just tapped it uh, straight down the throat of his rover, but it's ended up in the hands now of Angerston on the wing. Good piece of work. Feebiger is, is how I've been pronouncing it, and I am really hope that that's right. He's got the ball on half forward. Once again, apologies if I'm not pronouncing it right. Lovely kick. Goes down deep into the forward line. Once again, nice piece of roving there by the player in Durden, but he's tackled straight away. Has it been a judge to sling tackle? No, it hasn't. Everything's fair with that tackle as the ball goes up. Once again, plenty of players around the ball. Ball goes up, ball goes down. Player there in Westlake for Newry was the first one to dive on it, and he gets dived on, and he hands the ball back to the umpire for another ball up. Plenty of players around the ball, as you can see on the screen. Good piece of work there by uh, Fennell to do a bit of uh, aerial ping pong, but it didn't go anywhere. And we'll have another ball up by the umpire. Ruck work being done this time by Grieve and Fennell. Clear and kick by Neary is going to go out of bounds on the full, is it? And I think Angerston's going to get the free kick. The player taking the kick will be Jaden Anthony. Anthony goes long. Once again, a crowded forward line. Plenty of black and yellow Guernseys down there. The Ruckman in Fennell tries to get a handle on it. Good piece of work by the coach for Angerston. He's trying to barge his way through about four players. Cut. Canelli uh, picked up the ball and had a snap on goal, but there's been a free given to Newry for, I imagine, for holding the ball against Shannon, who was trying to barge his way through too many tackles. And I think it's Norton will take the resulting free kick. Once again, Tom, you're going to be picking some better players for both teams. Yeah. And uh, it's going to be fairly difficult to pick best players, I think. As Norton. Don't want to sway you in any way, but Norton's played a ripper. <laughs> He's gone down the wing side. Adams for Angerston. Good contest there. Henke had an airy with the handball. It's just dropped on the ground in front of him. So he chased it up himself. Scooped it out. Tried to get it to his forward line players in, in uh, Bentley, who's made his way up to a wing. James Bentley handballs the ball forward. Once again, good piece of work there by the player there in Miles, as in Jack Miles, the skipper for Angerston. Got the ball in close and tried to barge his way through. Did a pretty good job handballing the ball forward, but no real advantage, and we'll have another ball up. Fennell versus Adams. They've been at it all day, and they've been a good contest, the two of them. Ends up in the hands of Hubner. Hubner picked it up and kicked it, and the boundary umpire said, hey, mate, you're out of bounds. So we'll have another ball in. Boundary umpire, he has been throwing his whistle away when he does it. No, he's kept his whistle on his hand <laughs> this time. He throws the ball in. Once again, they've done a good job. Hubner gets a tap, goes straight down the skipper's uh, throat of Angerston and the player there in Miles. But uh, Wilfred gets the kick for Newry into the forward 50 arc for Newry Upta. Angerston have got numbers there. Great piece of work there. Rolak has absolutely kidnapped that ball out on, on their way through, but Angerson have been good enough to get it back. Player in Tom Ryan kicks the ball down. Good use of the body. Is it a push? No, it wasn't a judge to push. It was, it was a judge to good mark taken by Jenner. Jenner goes out towards the half forward flank, and Rolak really liked his gun the second half in particular. Rolak's going to take a, a nice mark in front of Anthony, as in Ben Anthony. And he's going to be having a shot on goal on, on the acute angle. He's over on the boundary line, over on the far side. Distance shouldn't be a problem. Rolak will be kicking from around 35 metres, you would think. Maybe 40 metres. Acute angle. Nice looking kick. Looks like it's going across the oh, face, but no. Grigurki's taken a <laughs> good contested ball there. Angerston had two or three players there. Grigurki plays on, swings around. Stevie J style. And uh, a major to Grigurki. Grigurki one against two defenders there, and uh, Angerston unfortunately get an, didn't get a fist on it. Yeah, yeah. The other thing Neary have done really well today is not not get outmarked in their forward fifty. I think if if they're not marking the ball, um, they're they're bringing it to ground, which 
which again gives your forwards the best opportunity of um, of having the shots at goal, which we've seen. We talk about all the important things in these games of regional football. One thing that I can tell you, Tom, that I've just noticed is the umpire that's about to receive the ball to throw the ball skyward was just doing groin muscle stretches. Yep. I think the groin muscles might be hurting of one of the umpires. <laughs> keep an eye on that. If, any, if, any, if anyone uh, cares about the uh, well-being of the umpire, he was just uh, having a bit of a flex. Adams versus Fennell. Fennell double taps it beautifully. Nice piece of work. Henke loses the handle on it. Nice work there defensively by the player in uh, Cole Hagen for Angerston to keep the ball in. Haven't called his name. He's been on the bench for a fair while, Cole Hagen, I think. Ball gets tapped down by Adams. Nice work by, by uh, the player there in Miles, the skipper of Angerston. Gets it down towards the half forward line. Nice work in numbers there by Angerston, but the umpire's seen a free kick, a, a throw. Didn't get a hand to it properly. And uh, and the player in uh, Koleski went to play on, but was told to get back behind the mark. Kicks out towards Norton. Norton goes in. Lovely defensive work by Murphy. Murphy with that lovely left foot goes down towards his full forward. Shimmy in a shake. He gets tackled. The player there in Durden, tried to get around his opponent and couldn't, ends up back in the hands of Murphy, Murphy goes, lovely kick, in creating space for the Angerston forward line players, oh it's been collected high, accidental but it's going to be a free kick to Angerston it's going to be the coach uh, Shannon who's going to take the free kick, that was a lovely vision by Murphy to see a bit of space over there Tom yeah, yeah it was and it was good of the Angerston player to get, get that ball back in Murphy's hands and let him use that Use that beautiful left foot and get it into space. Went back to go forward. Yep. Very good play. As we said, uh, we don't want you to go and watch the AFL game, but Collingwood currently at three-quarter time lead Essendon by a solitary point. As the coach of Angerston, Jay Shannon, has a shot on goal, 45-degree angle, kicking from Fort G. That's as... You could not shoot a rifle any <laughs> straighter than that. That was a beautiful kick by Shannon. No real breeze to talk about. Temperature's about minus seven here at Newry. No, I'm only kidding. What would the temperature be, Tom? Uh, I don't know. It's cold. 13? Uh, can't we get the weather report up on the screen? Well, ah, oh, that's a very good <laughs> point. <laughs> cameraman, cameraman, uh, cameraman Paul Oborn. Um, I can tell you that... Um, I don't know whether you've ever thought about getting a job as the feel-like man, Tom. It's 21.6 degrees here, apparently, but it feels like, whoever tells us it feels like, I reckon he's wrong. It feels like 18.7, but it certainly no, doesn't it feels feel... feels colder than that. That's right. The ball makes its way back to the centre, and it goes up, goes down. Plenty of tackles, plenty of smothers, plenty of people jumping on the ball, and it's finally been cleared by uh, Kaleski for uh, the Tigers. Goes down towards the half-forward line. Good defensive work by Angerston. Series of a couple of uh, short passes and handballs. Nice work out to Murphy. Murphy, instead of going long, he just chips it short this time. Lovely looking kick. Gee, I tell you what, they've got some system going now. Nice little chip kick and nice work there by uh, Hood. Little chip pass. I'm going to say that's Tuckwell, but I might be corrected shortly. It looks like Tuckwell. We'll wait for him to turn around. He, he's tried to find someone to handball to three times there, Tuckwell. He's obviously not confident in his own ability to kick 50 metres. I'm going to back him in, Tom. <laughs> Tuckwell, right on the line of 50 metres. He's kicked that. It's going the distance. It is going the distance. And it's through. Beautiful. Well done to Angerston. They've put another one on the board. Tuckwell tried to handball it off about three times to someone going past and decided against it. And there's a player down. What's happened there? That's Tuckwell. Uh, I think he's cramping. His hamstring? No, he's cramping. Oh, he's cramping. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's tried to <laughs> kick the cover off it and he's... He's tried he's to down. kick the ball. He's tried to kick the ball to a different suburb, and uh, he's coming off. He's doing the AFL. He's doing the AFL rotation of yeah. kicking the goal and coming off. But um, he looks like he's he looked like he's been shot in his right leg. Tuckwell comes off after a lovely looking kick. It was Angerston's fifth as Sanderson makes his way back onto the ground. Fennell, he's been brilliant in the ruck. Nice tap. Nice work by. The player there in Hoopner. Handballs to the Ruckman in Fennell, who handballs over to Laverty. Laverty, nice piece of work by Newry. A series of a couple of handballs and a short pass has ended up in the hands of Kogurki. Kogurki looks for his forward line player. There's Giles down there. 
two on one against Giles. It's been tapped tap to the Tigers player who has a snap on goal. That player being Schmal who has a snap around on the right hand side and it's gone a bit too far for a minor score. Takes the margin out to 62 points in favour of the Tigers here at the lovely Newry Oval as the Cockies, Cockies are starting to make their way back. Plenty of Cockies uh, making a lot of noise over on the <laughs> northern side. Ball goes towards Hubner. Hubner dropped the mark but uh, was good enough to pick it up. He gets the handball. Nice work. I've liked Hood's game today for Angerston. Handballs backwards to try and go forwards. Good contest and well done. Talking about players I've liked. Good spoil against Shannon from Norton. Norton's been very good around that half back line for the Tigers. Plenty of it. Boundary umpire. Once again, he's decided to hang on to the whistle this time. Throws the ball skyward. Boundary umpires and umpires have done a good job today. Although the umpire, now that I've said the boundary umpire is doing a good job, has to throw it in again. Maybe he'll get rid of his whistle this time. No, still hanging on to it. Bit hard on a bloke who's doing a whole half of the ground to <laughs> throw it in again. But anyway, we don't need to go down that path. Good piece of roving there by the player in Grigurki to pick up the ball. Nice work again by Argent to get that left boot to it. Getting down to the forward lines as quick as he can. Sanderson snaps it on his left. Chaos ball into the forward line for Angerston. They've been playing well this quarter. Here's an opportunity with a bit of space for the player there. He's tackled straight away. Gee, that's good defensive work by Newry. Great work there by Madden. Stopped the uh, forward foray of uh, Angerston. Over on the far side, Newry, Newry play on straight away. Good contested ball by the youngster in Giles. Smack bang in front of the scoreboard. Very close check there by the defender from Angerston. Very good set of hands there, Giles. We know that it's Giles because of his orange boots. He kicks it down towards the half forward line. Bentley tried to get in the right position around the 50 metre arc. Ball goes to ground. Angerston, Adams, nice handball. Good piece of work by the defenders of Angerston. Gets the ball over to the far side and great good contested hands. ball by Tom Ryan. Tom Ryan looks inboard, swings around to the left. That's a lovely looking pass and finds uh, Fieberger. Fieberger kicks out towards Canelli. Canelli really liked his game. Goes inboard. Angerston have got a new lease of life. Where was this in the first three <laughs> quarters? They go in towards Colhagen. Colhagen goes into 50 metre arc for Angerston. Good piece of work there defensively by Westlake and a clearing ball to the Tigers that goes out towards Giles on the half-back line. Giles goes over towards the scoreboard. Plenty of space over there for the Tigers. They're making their way over the far side. Good piece of defensive work there by Anthony. I think that was uh, Ben Anthony over there. Good defensive spoil, and we'll have another ball in. Tom Haslett will be doing the best players for you. It's the currently close to the 17th minute mark of this final quarter here at the beautiful Newry Oval. Tom will be giving three or four better players that he thinks from both teams. As the players there for Angerston, once again, a series of a couple of handballs. They're playing really well this quarter. Liked their last quarter, that's for sure. Player there in Hood's been busy. On to Ryan. Series of a couple of handballs. Goes down towards uh, Sanderson. Good, good work defensively there by uh, Koleski. Back in the hands of Lavada. Lavada for the Tigers. Gets the ball over and now it's in towards the players there in Bentley. There's two Bentleys there. I think that was Scott that dropped the mark. Nice work defensively again by Angerston. And there's a bit of space out here. Will it bounce fortuitously for him? No, it won't. That player's Cole Hagen, I think it was, that led in the chase of the ball, but the ball ran too far forward for him and didn't bounce up for him. Little kick by uh, Hubner gets to Wilfred. Wilfred on that left leg. He hooked that one badly, but it's going to be all right, I think. Good piece of work defensively. How's the umpire see it? Man in front. Good call. Anthony gets the resulting mark. Ben Anthony plays on with that left leg. Gee, there's a lot of left leggers in these two teams. <laughs> Nice work over to Rosler. Rosler to Murphy. Murphy kicks the ball down. Good defensive work by Jordan Fennell to cut that ball off. Chips in board looking for Lavender. Not much time left in this game. Nuri's look very good, but that pass is chopped off by the defender in Rosler. Rosler for Angerston, who was a late inclusion into today's game. Finds Murphy. Murphy with that lovely left foot kick. Finds Canelli. Canelli plays on straight away. Down towards his full forward. The full forward being Durden. Durden grabs the ball. He's tackled straight away. What's the umpire going to say? No prior opportunity. And we'll have another ball up. 
Really liked uh, Murphy's and Canelli's games for Angerston. Yep. They're trailing by 62 points, but there's some good players on both teams, that is for sure. Sanderson gets the tap, then lost the handle on it. That player, Canelli, has a snap on goal. Where's it going to land? It's going to land in the uh, pathway of uh, Durden. Durden, there's a bit of a loose, loose checking here by uh, Newry. Opportunity arises for Angerston. And uh, Will Fallon has an opportunity and gets the goal using his left. Another good goal, another good opportunity there for Angerston, and it wasn't wasted. Well played, Angerston. They're outscoring uh, Newry up to this quarter, which says something. Yeah, they're moving the footy a lot better. Yeah. Uh, if it wasn't for two or three skill errors, they would have had two or three more goals, I reckon. But they, they are looking very good. Second half's been all right. Always, uh, you can always judge a, t judge a team by a scoreboard, but you can also judge a team by the way they run out of game. And uh, Angerston running out this game nicely. Adams in ruck. Up against Norton. Norton's having to go in ruck. Adams wins that tap, goes straight to his uh, his coach in Shannon, who uh, was tackled high by Norton accidentally. And Shannon liked his game as well as coach. Smack bang in the middle of the ground. The umpire says call on. He's gone for a torp, and it's gone right off the side of his boot, getting it up in the hands of Wilfred. Wilfred, another good player from today. Swings around on that left. Nice looking kick down the line. Good defensive work again by Angerston. The spoil goes forward. Hoobner couldn't get a handle on it. It's been forced out of bounds. Boundary umpire comes around. Got to repeat the fact that the boundary umpires and the umpires have done a very good job today, Tom. I think they've been very good. Yep. Actually, the whole day's been good. They've uh, they've put on a good show here at Newry. As Hoobner gets the ball, just does a chaos ball. How's it going to bounce? It's going to bounce all right for Bentley. Although he's been uh, close checking. Nice work for numbers to get the Angerston numbers down there. Tom Giles is there waiting for the ball to spill out, but it's not going to. And well done, Angerston. That player down there, I think, is Tom Ryan, who was the last one to uh, get up and throw the ball to the umpire. And it now has been thrown up and it's been tapped out of bounds and we'll have a ball in by the boundary umpire again. 21-minute mark of the final term. Newry Tigers currently lead by 56 points. A lot better last quarter by Angerston. Certainly uh, be pleasing the coach this last quarter, that's for sure. As we speak about the coach, he's getting plenty of it himself. Ball's down towards the uh, the closest wing to us over here near the uh, grandstand, which we're positioned in. And it's been uh, taken out of bounds, and the boundary umpire will say, just hang on a sec, give me a chance to catch up, and I'll tell you what's going on. The boundary umpire and the main umpire are discussing it. And the boundary umpire has let the main umpire decide what he wants to do, and he's giving a free kick to Westlake. Bit of confusion with the last position with that particular case, but anyway, Westlake gets the ball, kicks it in. Nice piece of work by Billing, who gets the ball, chips it out in front of Lavender to run onto. Lavender can't get the handle on it. Good piece of work by Murphy. Murphy's tackled him, and that's holding the ball, umpire. That's exactly what the umpire says. Good tackle by Murphy. Deep in defence, he just waited for Lavender to pick up the ball. He, perfect timing on the tackle and great work by Murphy. That lovely left boot. Gee, I tell you what, he's been kicking the... I don't know whether these two blokes are mates, but Murphy to Canelli. I reckon we've been saying it a fair bit today. Nice piece of work in the centre. Series of a couple of handballs. Nice little chip kick, although it's not going to hit the target. Shannon was there waiting for the, for, the, uh, for the short pass. He now gets the handball, though. That time the handball comes out from Fallon. Shannon has a shot on goal. The coach... Has a shot on goal. It doesn't bounce nicely, and it does go through for a minor score. Bounce to the right instead of bouncing to the left. Minor score prevails. Newry plays on. 23-minute mark of the final term. Newry, 55-point leaders currently in this game, and uh, it's been a good quality game. Good quality day here at the Newry Oval. Angerston look like they're going to be able to rebound it back into their 50. Shadows covering most of the ground now. Temperature's dropped a bit too. Good use of the body there by Shannon, but uh, ended up not being able to get the ball after he'd got rid of his opponent. Ball hits the ground, a couple of players jump on top of it, and we'll have another ball up. Tom Haslett joining me this afternoon, and he'll be giving us some best players from each team shortly, and also the leading goal kickers. Paul O'Born on the camera. Thank you very much, Paul. 
Oh, great work there by Anguston. Desperation. Desperation to try and keep the ball in the forward 50. I'm going to say it's the coach, and yes, it is. It's Shannon again. He's been very good. Ruck work goes straight down the throat of the player in Fallon. Hamble goes deep into the forward line. Oh, good, good grab by the Newry player. The umpire's seen a holding three. It's gonna, it was a great grab by, great grab there by uh, Jenna, but uh, there was a free kick that was pulled out beforehand. A holding free kick to the Anguston forward line player. And that player being Ratcliffe, who's gonna have a shot on goal, 45 degree angle. And, and uh, as you'll see by the camera work, you're right behind him. He's gonna be kicking from around 30 meters. He's kicked that beautifully, straight through the middle. That's a lovely kick by Ratcliffe. And another goal to Anguston, brings the margin back. Brings the margin back to 49 points. And once again, we'll uh, reiterate the fact, Tom, that uh, the last quarter, Anguston haven't given up, which is a good sign. If you were Jay Shannon, the coach, and you were Jack Miles, the captain of Anguston, you'd be pretty proud of the fact that these guys are still running back to their positions. They're still trying their hardest, and they haven't given up. Anguston yep. have been pretty good this quarter. Yeah, I think there's a lot to like about their second half. Um, to be honest, they've, been, they've played a lot better brand of footy, and, and it shows um, on the scoreboard. So, yeah, a lot of positives to take out of it. Adams has done a lot of the rucking. So is Fennell. Fennell gets the tap that time. Grigurki got the kick, but it didn't really go to any advantage of anyone. Nice work there by the player in uh, Fallon. Series of a couple of handballs. Nice work by Anguston. They're going down forward again. Oh, great grab. Gee, that's a good contested ball by Durden. Has it been paid? Yes, it has. Yes, it has. There's a bit of dissent from Newry, but we're not playing AFL, so it's not going to be a 50-metre penalty. Durden, Durden, a good contest there. He's been awarded the mark. He's over on the far side. 45 degrees, roughly. And he's going to be kicking from around 35 to 40 metres. Madden's the man on the mark. Jumps up to try and stop it. But that's gone through for another one for Anguston. It's the 26-minute mark of the final term. And Anguston, once again, to their credit, have not given up. They just keep on uh, trying to get that ball down forward. The heat of the game's gone out of the game, obviously, because of the margin. But uh, once again, Anguston, very good. They look good yep. in the last quarter. It's a pity they didn't look good in the first half, like you said, Tom. Yeah, and Newry might be paying the price a little bit for how hard they worked in the first yep. two and a half uh, quarters. So, um, yeah, their two-way running's been excellent all day. So I think they're, they're pretty tired at the moment. As Fennell, as we're talking about being tired, Fennell... He's got his hands on his knees and he's sucking the big ones in. <laughs> Good news about the umpire is he's no longer doing his groin stretches, so he's obviously recovered from his uh, stiffness. <laughs> Pardon the pun. As uh, Fennell, big tap down to the half forward line. Straight to Jordan Fennell. Fennell to Fennell. Nice little chip, mark, chip pass out to the player there in Billing. Billing goes down deep, looking for Bentley. That's just bounced up beautifully for Billing. Billing has a shot on goal, and Bentley. he's missed a lot. Uh, Bentley, sorry. Bentley had a shot on goal and missed a lot. That was uh, James Bentley having a snap on there. Good piece of work by Billing to get the ball down in the forward line quickly, which is what newry has been doing all day. Out of bounds in the fall. The kicker will be had by uh, Tom Ryan. Fair to say, Angerston's been busy in the ha in the back line all day. That's an absolute shocking kick by uh, Ryan. Ended up in the hands of Newry. Hoopner will have a shot on goal. It was a tumble kick by Ryan. He puts his hand up to his teammate and said, sorry about the kick. And unfortunately, yes, he's sorry about it, but unfortunately it's resulted in a goal to Newry. It was a bit of a uh, mongrel kick out of the defence and uh, fortuitously ended up in Newry's hands and uh, Hubner finished off classy goal. 20, nearly the 28-minute mark here in the final term at the Newry Oval. We've been saying it all day. It's been a great day and been a very respectful day for Anzac Day. And hopefully all of our listeners and viewers have been able to uh, enjoy the respect that's been shown by both teams and the league here. Good tap by Adams, but it goes straight down the throat of Hubner. Hubner kicks the ball up. It's a high ball. That's a good piece of work by Murphy to be under the fall of it. Went straight through his hands, though, and he was tackled straight away. And we'll have another ball up. 
Over on the far side. Collingwood currently with nine minutes to go, lead by 11 points in the AFL. Collingwood currently 11 points up with eight minutes to go. Ball in the hands of uh, Angerston. Good piece of work there defensively by Billing to spoil the ball out. Correction, that wasn't Billing, it was uh, Norton who did that spoil. Been good all day. Norton on that half back line being very good. Nice work in the ruck. Ruck contest has been excellent all day as well. Ball gets thrown out, uh, thrown out literally, <laughs> literally gets thrown out by Cole Hagen. Once again, plenty of congestion over on that far side as the scoreboard attendants are looking straight in the sun. It's about the only part of the sun that's uh, still on the oval. It's smack bang in the uh, eyes of the scoreboard attendants. Ball still in the hands of Angerston. As the final siren goes, as the ball makes its way down to the 50 metre arc for Angerston. 49 point margin in favour of Newry. Uh, I think it's fair to say, Tom, that by looking at the players, they're spent. Yeah. It's been a high quality game, it's been a fast game, it's been an attacking game. As we see, uh, looks like a, a driver, a driver ice pack on uh, Henke's uh, right driver of the Newry. Uh, of the Neary bench walking out to congratulate their team and uh, commiserate with the Angerston team. All players and all officials gathering in the centre of the ground. Final score at Neary. Neary, 16 goals, 8, 104. Defeated Angerston in this great quality game of round three action. Anzac Day for Barossa Light and Gawler Footy League. Angerston, 8 goals, 7.55. A 49-point margin in favour of the Neary. Utpa Tigers. So all the players, once again, the spirit of Anzac and the uh, sportsmanship that all regional footy clubs and netball clubs, for that matter, should be showing. Shaking hands and congratulating and commiserating with each other. And, uh, Tom, good quality game. Yeah, it was. Yep. And I think Neary, obviously deserving winners and their, their work in their first half was, was exceptional. Their, their two-way running and um, how organised they were down back as well I think um, held them in good stead um, but as we said second half Angerston showed that once they moved the footy a little bit quicker and got the ball into their four lines they they had some quality players and some quality players as well so uh, a couple of strong strong Barossa teams and and it was was good footy to watch got to give you an opportunity uh, I'll get you to read out the goal kickers Tom um, if yep. you can read out the goal kickers from today Yep, so... And then after you've done that, I want you to pick out some better players from both teams as well, mate. Yep, so uh, James Bentley uh, with five for Newry. Um, then we've got Gagurki, two. Doki, two. Uh, Laverty and Hopner, both two as well. And then we had Scott Bentley with one. Henke uh, and Nichols, both with one as well. And then for Angerston, uh, we had Hood with one, Miles with one, Ratcliffe one, Durden one, Fallon, Shannon uh, both with one and Tuckwell with the two. Excellent. Um, so better players uh, in no particular order. I thought Fennell's work in the ruck particularly early um, set Nuri up to have the good win. I thought he was excellent. Uh, James Bentley obviously with his five, um, very good, very classy. Uh, then a couple of the boys around the footy like Hopner um, and um, the Scott Bentley, the other Bentley there, they were very good. The better, and the better Bentley. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and Grigurki, I thought, um, was, was outstanding, especially in that first half when the, the game was to be won. I thought he, um, yeah, he was outstanding. Uh, and then Angerston, a couple of better players. Canelli, very good. Um, Shannon was good in the second half Murphy very good and I thought Riley Argent um, in patches looked looked yeah. excellent as well uh, it always uh, as we uh, as we're going to get the uh, yeah, we're going to get the uh, judged best player on the ground so it'll be interesting to see who, who it's, who's named
Jack Miles being presented the medal for the best player for Angerston. Simon Fennell winning the player of the match for Newry, the Ruckman, very well deserved. Um, we also have a medal for the overall best player on the ground as voted by the umpires who would like uh, Leo Broadbent, a return service of uh, man and uh, like member of the footy club to present that to our overall umpires. Judge best on ground by the umpires. Thank you for attending today. It's been a really good day. Um, thanks, Angerson. Um, good rivalry. And look forward to having a beer with you boys uh, afterwards. Thanks again, everyone. Well done. Thanks. And that's the official uh, side of things finished from the Oval. And uh, well done, Ben Giles, who's the president of the Newry Upta Football Club. Well done to the ex-servicemen. Well done to the, uh, a very respectful and a very well run ceremony at the end of the game and uh, interestingly enough they had a, um, a best on ground a judge by the umpires they also had a, a best player a judge by each team for each individual team which I like the idea of uh, while we're talking about best players uh, Nicholas uh, Grigurki is the uh, judged best on ground by the umpires and uh, deservedly so both uh, best on ground performances from the club point of view. Uh, well done also to the captain, Jack Miles from Angston and Simon Fennell from Newry Upta respectively. So uh, fantastic presentations. Really nice to hear the history that's involved in uh, the Anzac tradition and a couple of individuals from 
uh, Angerston and Newry, stories behind what sacrifices were made by particular people in years gone by and uh, well done to everyone involved there. Just very quickly, I'll mention a few of the better players that I thought, uh, I, I, in no particular order. Uh, Grigurki for, for Newry, James Bentley as mentioned by Tom. I really liked uh, Cade Rolak's second half in particular. Rolak was very busy uh, for Newry. Simon Fennell I, I thought was brilliant, absolutely fantastic throughout the whole day. Uh, Mitchell Norton, uh, Mitchell Norton, if he wasn't in the uh, if he wasn't in the best three two one, he would have been very close to it. Mitchell Norton, I really liked his game on half back. He was very good, and also uh, uh, Wilfred uh, Terence Wilfred, number thirty five for Newry. That's the six best players that I thought. That was my personal opinion, as far as Newry Upt is concerned. As far as Angerston goes, once again in no particular order. Uh, Canelli, we said his name continuously throughout the throughout the uh, game. Brian Canelli. Jake Hood also very good. Um, he came in and out of the game pretty well, but he was very good for Angerston. Jack Miles, as mentioned, very good as as skipper. And uh, the goal he kicked, the first goal that Angerson uh, had on the board was uh, from him. And I, I like the fact that he booted it from 50 metres and then made his way back to the back lines, <laughs> which is uh, a, a good uh, a good effort. Uh, the coach, Jay Shannon, outstanding. Um, you could tell that he's coach because he was playing like a coach. He was trying to show everyone how the game should be played, and I thought Jay Shannon was very good. Love Jackson Murphy's game as well, using that left leg to get the ball down in the forward line or, or get the ball down as forward as, as quickly as possible was very good. And also uh, Angus Adams. We mentioned uh, Simon Fennell's ruck work for Newry. I thought Angus Ang Adams' uh, ruck work for Angerston was also very good as well. Sometimes a ruckman looks a lot better when the ball goes straight down a rover's throat and gets down to their forward line. So sometimes uh, some of the things might not get noticed that a ruckman does, but I thought that battle between the two ruckmen was very good. Uh, to Tom Haslett, it was your first uh, outing today, mate. Uh, really well done. Uh, thanks for having me, Chuck. Really uh, nice to spend a bit of time with you, young yeah. fella, on the, <laughs> during the afternoon, but uh, I thought you did a very good job in your analysis of the game and your uh, experience on the game. Was, uh, was very good. So uh, thank you very much for your input today. Uh, drive, thank you. Drive safely on the way home, young fella. Will do. And uh, also to Paul Oborn. He's, uh, he's always there for us. He's the cameraman. He does all the technical stuff. And um, if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't have this coverage. So to Barossa Light and Gawler, to the Football League for allowing us to be here. For the Newry Upta Footy Club, uh, Ben Giles and and Josh in particular, the, the president and the secretary of the Newry Upta Tigers, um, a huge thank you to the Newry Footy Club for making us feel so welcome and uh, putting us in a, in a fantastic spot. We really appreciate the, the time and effort that's been put in by the Newry uh, Footy Club and also to the Angus Footy Club because they were, uh, they were told that we were coming. They didn't have to allow us to come. They were quite happy for us to be here. So to Angerston... And with all of this situation of me not knowing this league very much and me not knowing the towns, uh, the teams very much, uh, they send through information um, which involved the players' names, the numbers, the nicknames, a little bit of history about the players, and uh, it's very much appreciated. So to both clubs, we thank you very much. Uh, to Paul Oborn, he follows us around. He does all the he does all the uh, the live streaming. He does all the technical stuff. And he's a he's a good mate of mine. I've only known him for a short period of time, but he's a very good man. And uh, without him, the expertise of the camera work, the expertise of all the technical stuff, and making sure all the mics work, and make sure that this, that, and the other works. Without Paul Oborn, uh, we wouldn't have this service. And finally, and probably most importantly, apart from the league and the clubs that we go to, um, who always allow us and always look after us so nicely. A big thank you to the sponsors. So you can see the sponsors on your screen. We thank the footy clubs. We thank the leagues for allowing us to come and, and cover regional football. That's what it's all about, getting out to the regional areas and getting out to these regional, um, these regional grounds so we can advertise and promote regional footy and netball the best way we can. Without the sponsors that are on your screen, it would be very expensive and it would be very hard to be able to do it week in, week out. So to all of those sponsors, I won't, I won't mention them, but you can see them on your screen. If you need some bedding or furniture, if you need some building done, if you need some fertiliser, if you need some ca a caravan, if you want to sell some livestock, 
if you want a nice cup of coffee, whatever it might be, all of those sponsors are places that we'd really like you to support. And uh, there's one on there that's a uh, bar and restaurant. There's a fair chance I'll be having a couple of beers straight after tonight. But uh, to all of those sponsors, we do thank you for your support. And I know all the footy clubs appreciate the sponsor support as well because it's uh, an expensive job to get around to all these regional grounds. And without the sponsorship support, um, we wouldn't be able to do it. To Newry, to Anguston, to the Brosselite and Football, uh, Brosselite and Gawler Football League, we thank you very much for today. To Tom Haslett, thank you very much, Tom. Just before we do go, Tom, um, we're going to Malala next Saturday to see the Malala versus uh, Two Wells game, which is in the Adelaide Plains Footy League. So hopefully everyone will cover us uh, next Saturday. This is SA Regional Footy Facebook page, and you can get all the games and all the information there. But, Tom, it's just uh, blown full time in the AFL game. What's happened in the AFL game? Uh, yep, yep. Collingwood have... Uh, 15 goals, 3, 93 have defeated Essendon, 12 goals, 10, 82. So Collingwood by 11 points. Accurate kicking by Collingwood. Yes. That's, yep. that's the game. Tom, what do you uh, what do you like about today's game, mate? Just briefly, as before we say goodbye to everyone. Uh, I've, I've said it a few times, but I, I think the, the way Newry set up defensively and, and got the ball in quickly um, was, was the difference. They... They, they didn't really um, mess up their skills too much. Um, they didn't get outmarked too much. They, it was a real real class performance from a, from a pretty good team in the competition. So um, they'll, be, they'll be right up there, I reckon. And how did you like your work experience? Did you like your first yeah, day on work good, experience? Good fun. The company wasn't great, but the, uh, <laughs> no, no, it was good fun. Good fun sitting watching footy and, um, yeah, hopefully do it again. Good on you. Tom Haslett, that is, and uh, we, we appreciate Tom's time and effort. He didn't have to do it. He wanted to do it, and I'm glad he did. So thanks very much, Tommy. And once again, thank you to Paul. Thank you to all our sponsors. Thank you to the Brosselite and Gawler League. Thank you to Newry Upta, Ben Giles and, uh, and Josh for, for looking after us so beautifully here at Newry. Enjoy the rest of your Monday. Enjoy your rest of your Anzac Day. A big thank you to all those service men and women who have fought in the past and the present and in the future that look after us to make sure that Australia is such a great country. It's Anzac, Anzac Day and we, uh, we really appreciate everything that uh, has happened in the past, in the present and in the future for making this country the place that it is for us to live in. Paul Oborn, thanks very much again. We'll catch up with you next week. We'll be at Malala next Saturday. Hopefully you can join us. Hopefully you've enjoyed the coverage. Thanks for joining us, and we'll catch up with you soon. All match its way skyward. Good defensive work by Cameron Longbottom.